अच्छा दो सौ फ्यू हुआ अटेंडिंग द सेशन कैन कम क्लोजर अच्छा आई थिंक सम पीपल आर स्टिल राइटिंग द टेस्ट अटेम्प्ट द टेस्ट द पीपल हु आर हाउ वॉज द टेस्ट टफ ओके सो वी विल डिस्कस द टफर पोर्शन ऑल्सो सम क्वेश्चन आई थिंक विच वी डिस्कस्ड ये ऑल्सो इन सम फॉर्म यू वुड हैव सीन दैम ओके I'll just have a look. I think the online students would have also joined. Okay, I think the people have started to join in. So we're going to start with this day two, the session two of the prelims revision program. and as you can see from the image here the topic for discussion for today will be the chapters pertaining to india's biodiversity okay we are also going to talk about the plant diversity of india okay and in general let's say the biogeographical realms or the zones which are present in india okay so that is going to be the total focus okay how do we divide the session again just like we did in the last class initially we'll have a quick revision if you are following the sunya notes i'm going to be referring to chapter 6 7 and 9 okay chapter 6 basically talks about biodiversity so here we'll be talking about the basics of biodiversity and also the conservation of biodiversity and here also i'll be referring to cbd which is the convention on biological diversity okay we'll also talk about terms like biopiracy how to prevent biopiracy so this is and of course i will also talk about terms like mega diverse country okay like minded mega diverse country high biodiversity areas uh, hot spots cold spots all the things which are related to biodiversity here then in chapter number 7 we are talk about basically the biogeographical realms of india we had seen a basic classification yesterday also but we'll just go ahead and we'll see that's that for example india has five biomes okay so we'll be quickly glance through what are the biomes which india has okay and in chapter 9 we talk about the plant diversity of india fine so here also we'll see the invasive plants which have been in the news some of the basic aspects some other plants okay and i think two questions we've also added so these are very interesting updates so both the current affairs part we have tried to incorporate and then we move towards the discussion of the 50 questions okay so this is going to be the format which we are going to follow all right so moving ahead the students who i think are online they also always have a query how to join it you can join the program wherein even if you join the batch right now you can attempt from the environment test and then as you move along your syllabus would be completed in due course of time okay so the students who want to avail this can contact the team and this these are the notes i'm going to be referring to the sunya's static notes okay in case you was referring some other source and uh, so what you can do if there is some other topic which i am telling you can just mention it briefly okay so we'll start with the first thing that is the basics of biodiversity fine now here the basic framework is we must know what is un cbd and when i say un cbd the definition of un cbd relating to biodiversity okay it is here that it talks about diversity within species between species and between ecosystems which then you can understand the concepts like alpha beta gamma okay but it is the basic definition which was given okay uh, at the rio summit of related to united nations convention on biodiversity right so we'll see the basic definition and then some basic terms are there right so you would have heard terms like umbrella species foundation species invasive species keystone species endemic species priority species there's a long list of those species so quickly we'll go through that okay we'll just see the examples okay so this part is telling you about the terms related to biodiversity i'll also tell you how do we measure it the measurement of biodiversity we also talk about after we are done with this part that when we say that india or the world has a lot of biodiversity there would be certain correlations which are present so we'll see some of the terms etc let's say like minded diverse countries biodiversity hotspots cold spots cold spots 
and then we finally end with CBD and its protocols. Okay, so here I'll talk about let's say Cartagena, Nagoya, and the related updates. So this entire framework will help you quickly cover biodiversity. Okay, so we'll start. So if you see, we have three levels of biodiversity, right? I said within, within species, between species, okay, and between ecosystems. In this similar manner, you have genetic diversity. Try to recall yesterday's, yesterday's example. We had normal tigers. Okay, we also had golden tigers. We also had black tigers. Okay, what is happening? There is a genetic variation. For example, in case of black tigers, what had happened? There is a tag pack one gene which has undergone mutation. Okay, so genetic diversity can happen between species. To give you another example, you would have also read about rice. Okay, different kinds of rice. Let's say if I talk about Kutanad in Kerala, okay, or in parts of Odisha, the same rice can have different yields also. Okay, and if you add the biotech component to this, we can have a lot of genetic diversity. So some genetic diversity is seen naturally, but I I am also saying this can also be artificially induced. Okay, if you bringing the aspect of biotech. Okay, so this is the genetics again, the differences in the DNA etc. Then there is a diversity in the species also. A very good example to understand is, let's say Amazon rainforest. Okay, we see the maximum diversity of species in the Amazon. Okay, can you tell me the reason why? Sorry, high rainfall. Yes, and okay, so it, it has constant, uh, at least good sunlight available throughout the year. Good rainfall. And it is not being disturbed. So it does not have frequent glaciation cycles, which are, let's say, present in the Arctic regions or, let's say, Antarctica. So because of that, you see a huge biodiversity in, let's say, in the Amazon rainforest. But if you compare it to a desert area, would you see a lot of diversity? No. Okay. In fact, in the next slide, we'll also see how this biodiversity is varying across the ecosystems. Fine. So that is how we see species diversity. In some areas, it is higher. In some areas, it is less, lesser. And then, of course, you can have the diversity between ecosystems. Now, when I talk about ecosystems, what is happening? I am increasing the span or the geographical area. Okay. And herein, you also have this alpha, beta, and gamma. So, what is alpha? Here, the alpha, the point of reference is smaller. So, geographically speaking, if I am talking of a diversity within a small period, uh, within a small area, that is alpha diversity. Beta is between, let's say, some ecosystems, and gamma is across multiple ecosystems. So here also, this zonation or drawing is only to tell you that the biodiversity is varying at the genetic level, species level, and ecosystem. And here also, within ecosystem, I can have alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha being the smallest area, beta like bigger area of comparison, and gamma being the highest area of comparison. Okay. So this is how the biodiversity is varying spatially also and temporally also in mean space also and in time. And this is also a good way to understand it. You have high biodiversity close to equators in the tropical regions. And as I move from equators to the areas of poles, the biodiversity dec decreases. Fine. So there is low diversity here, but there is high biodiversity because of the reasons we just understood. Okay. Constant precipitation. Direct sunlight, but here you have more slanting sunlight, harsher conditions, and again try to recall you have tundra biome here, taiga biome, etc. So all of this will make life very difficult. Okay. Now the same thing, this is as per the latitudes, okay, but also as per altitude, the biodiversity will vary. Okay. So for example, you have tropical rainforests at lesser heights as you move along almost the similar you have deciduous you have coniferous as you move along the height you would also find them okay so be it tundra snow the higher you go the lesser biodiversity is there because again the conditions will become harsher the availability of let's say oxygen will be lesser so even more cold conditions so this is how the biodiversity is varying overall okay so this is just one thing that we will keep in mind and then we will move forward, right? So now when you've seen all of this, how do we measure biodiversity? Okay. Can anybody tell me the name of the index? Sorry. 
that is a term any there is a specific index to measure species diversity people who have done the classes earlier also should know simsa in index suna hai theek hai there are ways of measuring it shannon wiener index and it is this index which takes into account parameters like species richness and species evenness okay yes sne good shannon index also and simpson index the students online Ria, we'll also discuss the questions. If you had found some questions difficult, we'll also see how to solve them, because this question is uh, the test is specific for biodiversity, and you have to attempt 50 questions in the exam specific to biodiversity. You you will get hardly two or three or four questions, but this is where your you we are let's say trying to give you a bigger exposure. Okay, species richness and one is evenness. Evenness can be easily understood in terms of uniform distribution. Okay. so let's say if if i compare if i have four species okay four different species i have made the species constant which means the richness is same richness generally means the variety so even if i find a lot of variety but the number can be different that would be known as richness the area is very rich in biodiversity but it it will only be even if the different animals or the species are fairly evenly distributed so using the parameters of richness and evenness there are shannon index there is also simpson index what do we do this is how we measure diversity there are complicated formulas which are at play we don't have to go there we just need to know the names okay the name there there is a concept called as species richness evenness and there is simpson index as well as shannon index which does the work right now moving forward if you see this image and through this we will try to see a lot of portions through this you can understand i'm going to now talk about the umbrella species right and here there are a lot of terms okay and by the way do not get confused that if i say a certain species is umbrella species and that is why in this image two species are holding the umbrella this is just to tell you that multiple species can fall in different 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 terms and categories okay so i'll start one by one the most important term is keystone species okay sorry ha huh, this one this one ha huh, this is no this is just to introduce the concept i am going to tell you about it yeah we'll start with keystone species okay what do you think is a keystone species something very important to the ecosystem okay if you remove a keystone species this will have a disproportionate impact on the ecosystem and by disproportionate i mean a more negative a very harmful impact okay so what happens let's say think of a grassland ecosystem right you have grasses you have deers and you have let's say lion or tiger if for some reason the population of lion declines what would happen the population of deer will increase and what would happen to the grass overgrazing would happen something of the same manner actually happened in yellowstone national park many years back okay a similar example you can again think in the aquatic ecosystem okay you have sea otters sea otters are keystone species of aquatic ecosystems why because they eat up sea urchin and sea urchin eat up kelps so just like the deer eats grass in the same manner sea urchin eats kelp kelp are underwater forests made up of see weed specifically okay microalgae right so here this i think is a lesser known example this is something you should know that sea otters eating up sea urchin okay which otherwise would end up eating kelp forest so if you want to keep the population of kelp in control we must ensure sea otters should be alive just in the same manner if you want the population of grasses or all these things to be aware we would still want the population of 
tigers etc or the predators to live that is why predators or these keystone species play a very important role so again to emphasize these are the species they have a massive impact on the ecosystem okay and if they are removed the ecosystem will dramatically change so we have seen example both for terrestrial and also for aquatic okay in aquatic it, the example is is, uh, is of sea otters eating up sea urchins okay so again we know what happens when these are removed okay and other for example the example is not limited only to this a lot of the predators in general or the top species or the apex predator would be a keystone species because the moment you remove it the entire ecosystem balance is going to be harmed okay now other than that there are other terms for example you have terms like foundation species umbrella species okay so again this is a funny infographic <laughs> just telling you what is an umbrella species now umbrella species by its very nature if you want to conserve that species so by umbrella you mean this is a strategy used by conservationist so let's say this particular species takes up this space so let's say if i'm talking of tigers but tigers would also be eating up okay tiger would have their own habitat and their own niche so if you really want to save that umbrella species you have to save in that whole umbrella all the species which are present so umbrella is in that sense a strategy a conservation strategy okay so which is then designated as this so this is again a geographical idea that if i want to save a species we will have a kind of an umbrella okay and in which while saving this species i will also save some other species right then you have foundation species okay what are foundation species which again have a very critical important role they can be corals they can be lichens okay they can also be kelps anything which has playing a very foundational role okay so they maintain or they create a habitat so corals again a very good example of this foundation species right there are also indicator species tell me any famous indicator species which has already been asked in your paper today gangetic dolphins okay gangetic dolphins yes frog is also good indicator species okay coral reefs can also be okay by the way when i say lichens can lichens be an indicator species they are indicator species of pollution and more specifically so2 okay so frogs are also there one good example oysters are also there all these are indicator species they will tell me the health of an ecosystem so when the uh, water levels or let's say when the water quality of river ganga declines what happens to the population of indian gangetic dolphin right it will decline that is why very recently the honorable minister spoke about the quality or let's say the uh, bod okay reducing of ganga should the bod reduce or in, uh, increase if it is to become better socho it should reduce okay so that was one para parameter which he told second was he said that the number of fresh water uh, let's say dolphins have increased so again this this is to implies these are your indicator species right then some other species now endemic i hope everybody here knows endemic means now endemic is a geographical concept It's found in that area okay can you give me examples of endemic species people online also okay red sanders okay we can say that to some extent because it is found only in eastern ghats and that too nilgiri tar can be one yes and nilgiri tar is predominantly found in two areas so one it is found in uh one it is found in Ir iravikulam national park and one it is which is in kerala and one it is found in tamil nadu okay in tamil nadu there is mukhurthi national park where it is found and we again have a question today on I iravikulam national park that we'll also discuss acha so that is endemic or socho it is found where okay theek hai aur kuch ha that what you saying is hangul yes 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 hangul will be endemic talking of hangul tell me about dancing deer is it endemic by dancing deer i mean sangai deer which is found only in manipur it is the state animal of manipur right right nilgiri rangur again endemic to western ghats you also have nilgiri tar which we just discussed okay 
so yes it is going to be found and there can be other example also but please be aware of misconceptions if i say great indian bustard is the state bird of Ra uh, rajasthan that is true does it make it the endemic species why found in gujarat found also in parts of central india and it can even go to parts of andhra pradesh so its habitat is not restricted secondly one more misconception one can have uh, let's say the one horned rhino now the maximum population is going to be found in kaziranga but is it only kaziranga it can even be found in parts of bihar also up parts of west bengal and in addition to it of course it can also be in bhutan and nepal okay so just be aware about these parts right endemic i think people would know keystone we have already seen wolves etc so these are all your keystone species acha one more term for indicator species is also sentinel species indicator species are also known as sentinel species okay so that is one then you have flagship species acha for flagship species what happens just like you have a flagship phone okay every company has its flagship phone that phone etc it has so many phones but that phone gets the maximum eyeballs maximum attraction so good from marketing point of view etc etc so these are ambassadors okay it can be a mascot but generally it is those species which looks good on the billboard marketing boards or ads etc so it can be used for conservation purposes for generate for generating awareness for many other purposes okay now in this slide and also in your test something known as jordan's cursor is written what is jordan's cursor chalo theek hai bird but I, i thought you would say so just like mouse and cursor okay jordan's cursor is found in acha pehla chalo in india the outside india chalo northeast theek you are slightly wrong kyu it is found only in श्रीलंका मलेशिया वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी विच इज इन आंध्र प्रदेश थोड़ा सा बस हल है नॉर्थ ईस्ट थोड़ा सा ऊपर है आंध्र थोड़ा सा नीचे है ठीक है बट वाई एम आई एम्फेसाइजिंग दिस बिकॉज दिस इज अ क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड बर्ड ठीक है ये जरूरी है और इस बार आंध्र प्रदेश वॉज इन द न्यूज फॉर कंजर्वेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर बर्ड एंड इट इज अ नॉक्टर्नल बर्ड एंड इट्स अ क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड बर्ड ठीक है फॉर बोथ द रीजन आई एम जस्ट एम्फेसाइजिंग दिस प्रायोरिटी स्पीशीज अब ये टर्म WWF ने यूज किया दिस टर्म इज बी यूज बाय डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ यूल फाइन डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ इन एनवायरमेंट वाई इट्स वर्ल्ड वर्ल्ड वाइल्ड लाइफ फंड फॉर नेचर नॉट द डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ विच वी यूज टू सी विच नाउ बिकेम डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू ई ठीक है वो नहीं है डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ यूल ऑल्सो फाइंड वेरी प्रोमिनेंटली पब्लिशेज अ लिविंग प्लैनेट रिपोर्ट विच हैज अ लिविंग प्लैनेट इंडेक्स ठीक है दैट इज वाई दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ दीज प्रायोरिटी स्पीशीज इन इंडिया फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन हॉन राइनो वी नो अबाउट इट वन हॉर्न राइनो में जो क्या बोलते हॉर्न है हॉर्न इज मेड अप ऑफ अ कैरेटिन विच इज अ प्रोटीन दैट इज वाइट इज पोच अलॉट स्नो लेपर्ड इंडिया में मिलता है डेफिनेटली कहा मिलता है साउथ में सेंटर में हिमालयाज में नॉर्थ ईस्ट में सो हिमालयन रेंज में ओके देर इज अ फेमस डेक्लेरेशन रिलेटेड टू स्नो लेपर्ड ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर नेम है या बिश्केक या बिश्केक डेक्लेरेशन है we also saw the image of snow leopard yesterday why the national symbol for kyrgyzstan and other than that cop 14th which had started which is yes which is the conservation of migratory species you also have asian elephant okay so that is there these all can be a priority species okay now this is very important invasive species some of them i'm covering here and when i move to chapter number 9 then also i'll also cover other invasive species first of all we should know some other names which it has one is of course what is this invasive alien species of it is also known as non native species it can also be your exotic species okay these terms signify that for example invasive species if i'm saying a particular species is invasive in india so first of all it has been brought from some other place so um, and by the way india mein most of the invasive species came during the british rule why a lot of the britishers went outside maybe to other parts they brought those species to india so it again it is kind of a colonial hangover which we are facing all these problems okay ab isme hota kya hai these species rapidly multiply okay can you tell me why do they rapidly multiply aisa kyu hota hai for example 
इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज आर वेरी एफिशियंट दे वेरी रैपिडली मल्टीप्लाई एंड दे लीड टू अल्टीमेटली डिक्लाइन ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी ऑफ दैट नेटिव रीजन सो जो नेटिव स्पीशीज हैं दे समटाइम्स आर वैनिश्ड दे डाई एक्सेट्रा बिकॉज ऑफ दीज नॉन नेटिव स्पीशीज बट माई क्वेश्चन इज वाई डज दिस हैपन आपने बोला किसने बोला अच्छा ठीक है और और मैं सुनता हूं लेट्स मी हम्म कंपटीशन ठीक है फेयर पॉइंट चलो दो लोगों ने एक पॉइंट बोला और कोई अल्टीमेटली द आंसर इज देयर आर नो नेचुरल प्रेडेटर्स दे आर ब्रॉट फ्रॉम समवेयर आउटसाइड इन इंडिया द स्पीशीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आर लिविंग इन देयर ओन एग्रोक्लोमेटिक जोन For thousands of years they are living. So in here, here, pe for these species they have their own predators. But for invasive alien species, first of all, they do not have predators, so they will not die that easily. They will engage in competition, like you guys told. So they will take up the resources, and very soon or later, because they are not familiar with the agroclimatic zone, in many of the cases they will take up a lot of water. Ab water jada lenge, resources jada lenge. What will happen? So the biodiversity which needs water. it will be under threat and sooner or later it will die okay so that is a problem eucalyptus one of the most prominent species in that acha why do we have eucalyptus or why do we plant eucalyptus for two major benefits one yes go good for water treatment second it has a very short time span if you plant eucalyptus etc is there is a eucalyptus you would have seen in a lot of and lot of state governments use use it it will create a forest in 10 to 12 years that's it whereas if you plant your normal varieties which be it evergreen deciduous it can take from 50 to 150 years so on that front these are very fast growing it can also be used to treat waste water but the downside is it will take up a lot of water india may be sabse bada issue water ka we are known as a water exporter country okay so in many places where you had let's say lantana camara a uh, prosopis juliflora one of the major issue was it was taking up a lot of water water was already scarce it was leading to interstate conflicts even for example prosopis juliflora is found in very in a lot of parts of india okay so this was causing a lot of issues in tamil nadu and the situation got so bad by the way the question uh, came of for prosopis juliflora in 2018 the situation became so bad that the high court had to intervene similarly in uh, jammu jammu and kashmir russian poplar its pollen when they become airborne okay it is very difficult to breathe okay so it is causing difficulty in breathing in general it will use more resources than what is normal so in here also the high court etc had to intervene just to stop this this is lantana camara and it is said that almost every other garden in india has lantana camara it looks very good it's ornamental but the problem is again it grows very very fast so after a point of time your native species will not be able to survive theek hai so that is one of the problems water hyacinth is known as the terror of bengal and in almost all these five what we have seen first of all they will go very rapidly and they will take a lot of water and you when when whenever i say water we are monsoon dependent country okay so if anything is taking up a lot of resources water etc that is going to be harmful so please keep this in mind okay this is invasive species i'll talk about more invasive species in the news when i discuss chapter number 9 very shortly okay uh okay yes no natural predators that is there so i think we have been able to cover some of the important uh, species which are there right now we'll move to some of the important classifications which are mentioned okay including mega diverse country including biodiversity high let's say all these areas so the very first is mega diverse country so the first thing that you should know there are total 17 mega diverse countries in the world and india is one of them okay india is one of those countries in all these things what you should know if if there is an organization which is giving it so here is united nations so you have unep within that you have world conservation monitoring center it is coming up with this mega diverse countries okay so you have mega diverse countries number 1 india is one of the 17 so what is the criteria 
that if there are on only 17 countries fulfilling it so there are two criterias okay one it should have 5000 endemic plants that is the first criteria and the second is it should have marine ecosystem within its borders so a lot of the countries could not satisfy the second criteria even if they di did have a lot of endemic plants which is why they were not classified as a mega diverse country fine so here please remember two major criterias and you might confuse them with the criteria of biodiversity hotspot similar criteria are there right so for mega diverse country again what we'll remember india is one of the 17 unap world conservation monitoring center then 5000 endemic plants and then what you have marine ecosystem within its borders okay this is mega diverse countries okay so you have around 17 countries which are there then you have high biodiversity wilderness areas okay now here please note if you see the areas here we'll see one by one you have north american deserts total five areas are there now this is actually based on an iucn classification iucn in its protected area classification has the term known as wilderness areas so based on that we have high biodiversity wilderness areas okay now we have seen five one is north american yesterday again we saw amazon and congo okay we also saw this part yesterday of mekong so here you have one north american deserts amazonia congo forest okay miombo mupane and this new guinea okay so this one part of this is actually south african okay so these are the five parts which are there right now these parts had been actually declared by conservation international the classification followed is of iucns and this body is going to be seen in many let's say at least three times i'll tell you today so th this is the first time i'm telling you conservation international okay these are high biodiversity wilderness areas okay moving forward there's a term known as biodiversity hotspots right now here currently you have around 36 biodiversity hotspots now this was given by now this is something i am expecting you to know there was a scientist famous scientist norman myers right and then was taken up by conservation international okay so they came up with the idea of biodiversity hotspots and here first of all the name is hotspot so number one it has huge biodiversity but at the same time these are threatened also okay so two things have to be followed one it has high species endemism we've asked you at least this question two times in this test okay one it has high species endemism and second it has to be threatened also now high species endemism can be proved by it has 1500 vascular plants as endemic that is the first criteria here the criteria was 500 endemic plants sorry 5000 this is 5000 here you have 1500 vascular plants as endemic then it should have around 70 percent of the area should be threatened or conversely speaking only 30 percent or less should be available right so 70 percent of the area can be threatened or less than 30 percent of the area would be available so this is the one of the things that we should know about the biodiversity hotspots it has both endemism okay so yes endemism is also there it is also threatened norman myers conservation international total 36 biodiversity hotspots now can you tell me in india how many of these follow you can also see the image to guess yes so here india has four which are so one you, you can see western ghats and this part sri lanka so it is not eastern ghats it is western ghats then you have indo burma region you have a parts of sunda land and himalayas okay so total how many biodiversity hotspots we have four we will remember that okay the two criteria will remember that and these two criteria always try to compare with mega diverse countries one can easily confuse you so just read it once that is there now one term is hotspots in hotspots i am emphasizing that they have to be threatened another term is biodiversity cold spots fine now here it is going to be the opposite what you've read first of all it is not having a lot of high biodiversity 
dusra it is not going to be th threatened also because of that right so level of threat will be less less threatened and less biodiversity but that does not mean we should not conserve them so in fact a lot of new research and articles says that the biodiversity hotspots in that sense have saturated okay jitni bhi species milni thi because they have now less space available for new species to come and specialize so now we should focus more on the cold spots so that is one of the things although cold spots do not have or let's say they have not been directly uh, classified by any body for example here it was conservation international this is just a term used by scientists so it is not as if the conservation international or any famous ngo has given this but uh, many times scientists use the term that instead of hot spots now we should also focus on cold spots okay so here of course we know that biodiversity hotspots they get a lot of focus because of their high levels of biodiversity but here while the biodiversity is less but still they provide a very important habitat for let's say bird species other species they also provide ecosystem services right so there is a potential for restoration right in fact i'll also tell you one recent update uh, there is a very famous science journal in that journal it was mentioned that it is ultimately the biodiversity cold spots where we will have a lot of species specialization what is specialization that when you have let's say amazon rainforest all these forests because these areas have a lot of biodiversity there are a lot of food chain food webs to wahan pe niche or species specialization has gone to another level and that has now saturated theek hai these areas are relatively undisturbed so yahan pe you can have new species coming in those species can interbreed to form new species and again more systems can happen so this is simply based on the idea that because these are relatively undisturbed they do not get enough attention so maybe now they can become the new hot spots so currently they are there are known as cold spots okay this is there now another term bio geographical realms if you are aware about the geography etc you might have known about it how many realms do we have okay so there are this ne neo arctic oceanic neo tropical pale arctic indo malayan australia antarctic afro tropical so total these are the realms why are we studying it it is important to know because india falls under two realms this you can easily see from the image one is the indo malayan realm which you can see a part of india which is colliding and then the pale arctic realm and you can also see the biggest realm out of this is pale arctic biggest okay it is stretching to a very large area and second is this indo malayan realm okay now these kind of information can also be used in your mains answer for example in 2018 a question was define india's biodiversity now how would somebody define it you can only define it by using all these terms india has having four biodiversity hotspots india falling in two of these realms etc so this is something that you should know and i think we have tested you on some of the questions now we are also not expecting you to know all of this some of the questions can also be used from informative purpose that we'll also discuss ठीक है तो इसके लिए ऑल दैट विल ट्राई टू नो दीज रेल्स आर बेसिकली द लार्ज स्पेशल रीजन शेयरिंग सेम बायोलॉजिकल एवोल्यूशनरी हिस्ट्री ओके एंड अगेन इट हैज रिलेटिवली सिमिलर पैटर्न ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ दीज ऑर्गेनिजम्स ओके दैट इज हाउ दीज रेल्स आर डिफाइंड एंड सेग्रीगेटेड ओके अनदर टर्म वेन यू रीड अबाउट हॉट स्पॉट कोल्ड स्पॉट अनदर टर्म इज होप स्पॉट ओके ना होप स्पॉट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल you have an organization known as mission blue okay and again the scientist was silvia earl now here hope spots are predominantly the re regions of water i say i should say water oceans etc these are your ho hope spots so it is said that when you conserve these coastal or the water based regions you can conserve a lot of biodiversity in india you have two hope spots which are lakshadweep and andaman and nicobar islands so both the lakshadweep and the andaman and nicobar islands are our hope spots and whenever i say of hope spots or in general this is also connected to another idea that is known as blue carbon what is blue carbon so when we read about uh, carbon sequestration in that you read about green carbon brown carbon blue carbon 
ब्लू कार्बन इज द कार्बन रिलेटेड टू द कोस्टल और लेट्स से द ओशियानिक इको सिस्टम हेयर यू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पोटेंशियल टू सेव एंड सिक्वेस्टर कार्बन बिकॉज हेयर यू विल हैव द मैंग्रोव यू विल हैव सी ग्रासेस ओके यू विल हैव टाइडल मार्शेस एक्सेट्रा this has a lot of potential so again all these islands can also have sufficient way in which a lot of carbon can be sequestered additionally to yahan pe biodiversity to high hoti hi hai other than that it has a huge potential for saving carbon okay these are hope spots okay now when i'm talking of biodiversity so last two more topics which we'll see one is biodiversity conservation okay and then we'll also see cbd in biodiversity conservation i think this is basic classification you would know in situ and ex situ in situ means you are conserving the animal in its natural habitat ex situ outside the natural habitat before we talk about this i think everybody would know the recent translocation of cheetah from south africa to india i am talking of uh, uh, sorry african cheetah where would you place it in situ or ex situ and this question is also for the online class uh, students where would you place this the recent translocation is 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 that an example of in situ or is that an example of ex situ conservation yes the answer is ex situ fine so we'll quickly go through these terms we have biosphere reserves we have national parks we have na wildlife sanctuaries we have sacred groves sacred forests sacred lakes all this is in situ ओके okay. अब इसमें से फॉर एग्जांपल बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व्स हाउ मेनी बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व्स डू वी हैव इन इंडिया 18 डिक्लेयर्ड अंडर यूनेस्को एंड यूनेस्को हैज अ मैन एंड बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व्स प्रोग्राम ऑफ द ईयर 1971 इन दैट यू हैव बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व्स राइट यू हैव नेशनल पार्क्स डिक्लेयर्ड अंडर वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज अगेन वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट एंड इन द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट वी आल्सो हैव थ्रू दैट वी कैन डिक्लेयर टाइगर रिजर्व्स we can declare conservation reserves and community reserves but sacred forest or sacred groves do not have any legal backing in the same manner biosphere reserves also do not have a legal backing they are simply declared under the unesco's mab man and biosphere reserves program theek hai so this all is in situ you are conserving it in its own habitat ex situ is slightly more important because again a lot of updates keep on happening here you have botanical gardens zoos gene bank tissue culture in addition to this we can also mention captive breeding we can also go for cryo preservation what is cryo preservation conservation in very low temperatures almost 196 degree let's say with liquid nitrogen and when you put any organism at such low temperatures what happen the main thing is jo bhi metabolic activity hai ya respiration hai that will almost stop so then you will be able to conserve it so cryo preservation okay uh, be it captive breeding tissue culture gene bank all of this is one okay there is a famous global seed vault where is it svalbard norway theek hai wahan pe bhi the same principle you are using in very cold temperatures you are saving those seeds so the that global seed vault is in svalbard norway do we have a similar seed vault in india where is it agar guess karna ho to kahan karoge it is in ladakh so re read about it i think it is around the changthang area but read about that india mein where do you have that fine changthang ke as okay 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 so this is one so this is overall biodiversity conservation in tomorrow's class we'll go in more details because in tomorrow's class legislations i'm going to do in slightly more detail kal legislation ka topic hai i think tomorrow you have legislation uh, legislations and pollution okay so the first part we'll also cover all the let's say nitty gritties of wildlife protection act etc etc so we'll do that and then we move to the last topic for biodiversity that is convention on biological diversity again going back we had the 1992 rio summit the rio summit led to f triple c ccd and so today we are talking about cbd cbd is convention on biological diversity fine for cbd there are few things that you should know number one it has three main principles it has two protocols then let's say you put in the recent cops this is how i remember it 
then let's say i can also talk about india okay we had a similar framework for deserts also yesterday right the three principles of cbd number one is first of all conservation of biological diversity so one is conservation second talks about sustainable use and third talks about equitable access and benefit sharing so first and second is relatively easy to understand you are talking of conservation of biological diversity sustainable use of biological diversity the third one says that fair and equitable use of genetic resources which is tied to the idea of access and benefit sharing ye jo term hai ye abhi fir se i'll explain to you when i tell you two things one is biopiracy and to control that and to ensure this you have a nagoya protocol okay so first of all these are the three principles that one should know related to convention on biological diversity number 1 now this convention if you know of course this is a snapshot so it has two major protocols one is yes one is cartagena and the other is nagoya right now only the keywords you should write down cartagena is related to bio safety because of nahi nahi bio piracy is nagoya uh cartagena is related to bio safety related to lmos living modified organisms and gmos genetically modified organisms theek hai and because of that a bio safety clearing house etc is to be established ultimately the whole idea is bio safety keyword kya hai hamara okay how is bio safety ensured it is ensured through advance information agreements aia this is also a salient feature of cartagena protocol bio safety clearing house bio safety in general aia is related to cartagena which helps to mitigate against lmos and gmos lmo means living modified organisms and genetically modified organism which basically means if from usa you are bringing any genetically modified organism to india theek hai then all of a sudden the noses of people become pink theek hai aisa hoga nahi but agar aisa hua so you should have some mechanism to deal with it right to agar koi bhi cheez mein if you do a genetic modification so there can be a danger so what the protocol says there should be advance information agreements to prevent this because the moment you do anything or if you toy with any organism genetically etc there can be long term consequences aur isme bhi the famous principle is law of unintended outcomes you wanted the bt brinjal to be tasty and high yielding but 20 years down the line usko khane ke baad people are developing tails who knows theek hai this is also one of the arguments given by the other side that is why jo bhi bt ya gm products ko enforce karna itna mushkil hai people will always say the law of unintended outcomes you never know to ab uske liye kya karoge you have to have a 20 30 year long study only then you can have long field trials and then finally authorize it that is why there is a lot of issues that is number 1 cartagena then you have nagoya nagoya is going to enforce or ensure access and benefit sharing but to understand nagoya you should understand what is bio piracy i think we've asked you two questions on bio piracy piracy you know when i say piracy what comes to mind any famous music composer i i i'll not say the name but i think somebody would have read about piracy okay so in piracy what happens you're using something you're not giving them a credit so it can be you're watching maybe a tv show which should have been watched on, on a platform you you got it through scientific or unscientific means we do not know it can be any music any of these things book etc so on and so forth so here if you now apply the same idea to biodiversity let's say we go to a certain part of western ghats we get the information from a particular tribal group in fact i'll tell you very shortly kani tribes did something very remarkable wo bhi dekhenge aage so you take the information from them and by you i mean many mnc's do that the mnc's which create big big pharmaceutical products they get the information they make a product but they do not share the benefits or the profits of that products with that particular local community ye bhi seedhe bhai pari si hui okay so yahan pe your traditional resources were exploited by any other group but your due credits were not given and also money was not shared and this is happening at a mass scale in india a lot of our traditional practices including a lot of yogic practices meditation practices bahut pehle all of them were patented by the west 
and when india got to know we had the whole let's say a lot of work was being done both at wto dispute settlement also we then finally set up a traditional knowledge digital library to document everything okay by the way tkdl is under the ministry of ayush okay so here everything was being documented whatever is the traditional knowledge okay it was documented and by the way tkdl has been asked twice in your upsc mains not once but twice so isme when you are documenting things then you can ultimately let's say uh, you can fight a patent case kyunki jo patent examiner hoga they would want to know the evidence then you will show sir in my this scripture in this book in this record this is the record so now somebody is now holding a false patent cancel his patent award me the patent how would that happen unless and unless un unless and until you do not document something fine other than that you have nagoya protocol so within the biodiversity act of 2002 india so that is one way and there are other acts also in india and other guidelines which promote the idea of preventing biopiracy ki whatever are the resources in india we'll try to ensure that they belong to us if somebody is using they have to take due per permission okay so nagoya protocol is there this ensures what access and benefit sharing fine when i say recent cop is the most recent cop which has happened is the 15th cop which is let's say happened in two places because of covid firstly it happened in kunming kunming is in china so it happened in a virtual form and then finally it happened in montreal which is in canada that is why when you read articles you will hear kunming montreal biodiversity framework or you can also hear kunming montreal biodiversity framework fund or global biodiversity framework fund so as an outcome of this particular uh, cop one a framework was created and a fund was also created fund why because to ensure anything you need to put in money okay so here two things had happened so you had a global biodiversity framework fund okay and you have the kunming montreal biodiversity framework all of that is a recent cop okay again why why do do you want to have this because if you have read there is a term known as aichi biodiversity targets so they were initially 20 targets to be achieved by 2020 now because 2020 was done so that is why you call this as the post 2020 biodiversity framework and in that now you have updated this aichi to 30 by 30 target 30 by 30 which means 30% of total land and sea to be saved by the year 2030 that is one and this particular framework only has only has 23 goals okay so please read the goals one of the goals i have told you 30 by 30 by the way it's not that difficult all the goals mostly all the goals are purely english okay but in i think three or four goals they have exactly mentioned a target for example i'll tell you the they have to raise 200 billion dollars per year to finance biodiversity related issues that is to be done in the fund but other than that there is a list of 23 goals which are there there are very good infographics on this so just have a look at it once okay so total 23 goals out of which one is a 30 by 30 target okay so you have kunming montreal biodiversity framework that is one now the last part is india okay in india we had biodiversity act of 2002 now some some uh, sometimes people ask what is the difference between signing and ratifying india signed cbd way back then india enacted this law the moment you enact a law that becomes uh, that means you have ratified the act to give you another example kyoto protocol was signed by then bill clinton but it was never ratified that is why us is always criticized of not adhering to or not having binding commitments in kyoto protocol theek hai kyoto protocol abhi hum aage dekhenge suna hoga shayad aapne it is related to greenhouse gases right so india when it enacted the Bi Bi uh, biodiversity act of 2002 so it means india ratified it that is one ek aur cheez hai within this act we designate biodiversity heritage sites bhs we designate this okay i think as of now you have 44 bhs theek hai this you can find from the site of envis which is maintained by ministry of environment currently 44 bhs last time when we had, when we were doing it india had 36 bhs 
थर्टी थी महेंद्र गिरी ओडिशा और थर्टी थी अरितापति इन तमिलनाडु बैक देन मतलब पिछले साल सो अ लॉट ऑफ न्यू वंस हैव बीन एडेड जस्ट टू गिव यू एन आइडिया ओके सो दीज आर योर बीएचएस कैन एनी वी टेल मी द फर्स्ट बीएचएस आप लोगों को शायद कराया मैंने याद है द फर्स्ट बीएचएस ऑफ इंडिया आई थिंक इट इज समथिंग टैमरिंड नलूर ऑफ टू एंड द ईयर इज the year is 2007 and the place is bangalore can anybody please check and tell me or nallur grove something like that of 2007 that is the first biodiversity heritage site of india so again coming back to our framework three principles are there you have protocols you have cop and you have the india related contribution okay अच्छा नलूर टैमरिन ग्रोव ठीक है इन बैंगलोर एंड दर इज आई थिंक टू थाउजेंड सेवन ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है राइट नाउ पर फोर्टी फोर है पर एग्जाम से पहले हो सकता है अपडेट हो जाए तो जस्ट कीप अ टैप ऑन इट बिकॉज दैट इज और उस पर स्टार मार्क लगा लो दिस इज मे बी वन थिंग यू विल चेक बट वाई डिड आई टेल यू अ क्वेश्चन कैन कम द नेम बिकॉज द थीम इज बायोडाइवर्सिटी सो इफ वेन यू फाइंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी हेरिटेज साइट्स दे आर डिक्लेयर अंडर बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी इवन मोर स्पेसिफिक आई टेल यू सेक्शन थर्टी सेवन of this act in this what happens state government consults the local bodies and then declares the biodiversity heritage site theek hai so this is what happens to declare a biodiversity heritage site so you can even add it to ki humne dekha abhi for example high biodiversity uh, wilderness areas mega diverse so you also have a biodiversity heritage site legal framework you already know and why the legal framework exists because we are signatory to cbd theek hai अब सीबीडी पे एक और सवाल है बहुत लेट्स से वेरी डिटेल्ड विच आई थिंक आई डिस्कस बना डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन विद यू दैट क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू ओरिजिनेटिंग कंट्री क्या क्या कर सकती है विद रिलेटेड टू सीबीडी आई थिंक द नाइन्थ क्वेश्चन दैट इज देयर नाउ दैट इज डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द प्रोटोकॉल वेरी डिटेल्ड इट इज देयर बट यू विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड द मेन लेट्स से वॉट आर द राइट विच अ कंट्री हैज वेन यू आर सिग्नेटरी टू दिस ओके तो वो हम वहां पर देख लेंगे बायोपेरिसी हाउ मेनी यू अंडरस्टैंड अब समझ में आ रहा है बायोपैरिसी ओके एंड अगेन आई एम टेलिंग यू वाइल मैक्सिमम प्रोविजंस टू कंट्रोल बायोपैरिसी आर अंडर द बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट बट इट इज नॉट द ओनली एक्ट इनफैक्ट फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट में भी इसकी बात करी गई है यू आल्सो हैव द जीआई एक्ट उसमें भी वी वांट टू प्रिवेंट बायोपैरिसी वी वॉन्ट टू गिव मोर फोकस टू ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज ओके इनफैक्ट वी विल डिस्कस वेन देर दैट पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन वहां पर हम इसकी बात कर लेंगे ओके दैट इज देयर एंड आई थिंक देर आर स्टिल सर्टन थिंग्स वेर इन यू नीड अ मोर फाइनल रीडिंग ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड टू वो मोस्ट प्रॉब्ली आई टेल यू टुमारो इफ दैट इज नॉट कवर टुमारो मेरे को एक बार रिमाइंड कराना क्योंकि क्या होता है फॉरन नेशनल क्या कर सकते हैं फॉरन यूनिवर्सिटीज वॉट दे कैन डू आर इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटीज अलाउड आर इंडियन सिटीजन अलाउड लेट्स ए हकीम और वेज और लेट्स ए लोकल एग्रीकल्चरिस्ट how let's say which people or which section of people have to take permission from the national biodiversity authority there are a lot of sections under the act and these are very fine points of this okay that ultimately to pre let's say prevent biopiracy what is to be done so in case we do not cover it tomorrow let just remind me once mai aapko bata dunga is iske bare mein theek hai okay so cbd i think the framework is clear protocol is clear cop is etc is clear fine so now we move to the second part now the next two parts are relatively small and then we move to the discussion indian biodiversity diverse landscape ab isme bhi i'll be repeating what we have done pehli cheez to we are how many realms are in india so we are a part of palearctic indo malayan how many biomes are in india so let us see the five biomes so pehle bhi uh chalo realms to okay we have already seen that palearctic zone and subcontinental zone ab yahan pe i've just used the basic maps which you can find so of course we have seen the tropical evergreen forest where are they found kal ki class mein western parts of western ghats and this part of northeast andaman and nicobar right we have seen that you have tropical deciduous forest what is the difference between evergreen and deciduous shedding the leaves and of second day availability of rainfall okay then you have montane forest iska matlab kya hota hai they will be in the mountainous region so agar yahan aapko if you see mountain forest can you see them in, in uttarakhand can you see them in himachal ladakh 
yes we can see that we, okay and then you have mangrove forests kal dekha humne where would you find mangroves maximum concentration of mangroves ye dikh raha hai this is okay other than that you will also find them in other small small places that is there mangrove ke what are the adaptation which mangrove has viviparity which means seed germinates in the tree itself other than that it has prop roots buttress roots it also has pneumatophores what is pneumatophores aerial roots breathing roots fine because these are under water locked conditions bahut saline condition hoti hai theek hai that is why you have mangrove forests mangrove wale mein ek cheez dhyan rakhiyega indian state of forest report 2021 which is the recent one abhi 2023 nahi aayi hai add the details from there how much mangrove do we have in india 2019 se 2021 has that increased or not number 1 okay i have told you the maximum number are still world mein sabse zyada yahan pe hai but report ke hisab se maximum increase kahan hua hai these are two facts some somebody knows the answer theek hai but baki log thodi si mehnat kar lenge theek hai but this is what you have to do especially for mangroves right mangrove pe sawal bahut achhi chance se banegi तो अगर जो इफ दैट हैपेंस यू वुड ऑलवेज बी वन स्टेप अहेड ओके अच्छा लेट मी आस्क यू अनदर क्वेश्चन इफ यू फॉलोड योर करंट अफेयर्स हैज एनीबडी रेड अबाउट देम कोनो कार्पस ट्रीज वॉज वेरी मच इन द न्यूज बहुत सारे आपको हर सोर्सेस में दिखेगा दीज आर एक्चुअली मैंग्रोव स्पीशीज बट वेरी स्मार्टली दीज आर इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज सो दिस वॉज बींग वाइडली यूज इन गुजरात and now the again the state government etc had to intervene isko hatane ke liye because again it is causing a loss lot of issues for biodiversity okay kono carpus kahin bhi aap padhoge aapko acche articles mil jayenge but what i'm saying is that is how you will club information fine mangroves are related jo bhi important points hai ek jagah pe ek page pe like we tried to consolidate yesterday we'll try to do that okay okay fine now I think I'll just quickly go through this because most of the things we've already seen. अगर कोई ऐसी चीज important होगी मैं यहाँ पे highlight करूँगा आपको बताऊँगा. Okay. Now again I gave you what I gave you as a homework. I'll now repeat today. I asked you to read about evergreen forest या उनकी species के नाम. Okay. Rosewood a very prominent example. Mahogany, ebony etc. These are examples of evergreen. Deciduous का example क्या होगा? Teak, sal, shisham, mahua. sandalwood etc red sanders is an example of theek hai deciduous mein hi aa jayega theek hai to abhi pehle to first this thing should be clear to you right that which example is going to fall now tropical mein one we already know where they are going to be present i'm not going to repeat that other than that these are well stratified theek hai we also saw an example of commensalism here batao epiphytes did anybody read about sea anemone and clownfish batao kya hai चलो म्यूचुअलिज्म है और बार्निकल्स एंड वेल्स पढ़ा क्या पढ़ा अच्छा और किसी ने पढ़ा बार्निकल्स एंड वेल्स चलो ओके पर एक ही प्लीज कीप ऑन रीडिंग अबाउट इट इफ यू स्टिल फाइंड एन इश्यू यू यू कैन लेट मी नो ओके दिस यू ऑलरेडी नो दे इज नो डेफिनेट टाइम टू शेड द लीव बिकॉज दे शेड लीव थ्रू आउट द ईयर ओके ट्रॉपिकल डेसी में क्या रहता है we know that there is going to be or general deciduous mein they will have a specific time okay other than that of course uh, the availability of rainfall will decrease to yahan pe over 200 cm is number 1 here we have tropical and we also have the, sorry you have moist it is not most it is moist and it is dry okay to yahan pe this is 100 to 200 just to have a fair idea and this is from 70 to 100 cm ab yahan pe shayad ye naam sune ho kisi ne tendu palas amaltas bear khair all these are dry deciduous okay that is there then you have tropical thorn forest now here of course plants are leafless we know why why are the plants leafless save water very simple okay for example if you know that you have plants leaves will have stomata ab stomata kya karega when the stomata opens first of all they would want to take up carbon dioxide बट वाइल डूइंग सो एक वॉटर का लॉस भी हो सकता है दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ट्रांसपीरेशन लॉस और इवेपो ट्रांसपीरेशन लॉस सो देर इज ऑलवेज अ ट्रेड ऑफ ओके 
सो इन फैक्ट वेन यू वेन वेन वी सी दिस क्वेश्चन ऑन एक्सेस सी ओ टू वॉट दिस दिस कैन डू तो वो बहुत अच्छा कंसेप्चुअल क्वेश्चन है देन आई एक्सप्लेन टू टू अदर कॉन्सेप्ट देर दैट इफ द एयर इज अबंडेंट इन सी ओ टू ओके तो जनरली वी थिंक इट इज वेरी हार्मफुल बट वहां पर फायदे होंगे ओके सो दैट वील सी देयर आई टेल यू वॉट दैट इज रेलिवेंट ओके दिस वी एव सीन बबूल वाइल्ड डेट खेजरी खेजरी ट्री से कुछ याद आता है ओके कैमल राजस्थान एंड अ फेमस कम्युनिटी बिश्नोई कम्युनिटी वर्शिप्स द खेजरी ट्रीज सो दिस आल्सो कैन बी एन एग्जांपल ऑफ सेक्रेट रोव्स एंड बाय बिश्नोई कम्युनिटी आल्सो वर्शिप्स देयर देयर इज एन एनिमल ब्लैक बक ओके सो थ्रू दैट यू कैन रिमेंबर बिश्नोई कम्युनिटी एंड देयर आर अदर कम्युनिटीज इन इंडिया आल्सो ओके व्हिच आर वेरी फेमस फॉर कंजर्विंग सर्टेन एरियाज ओके अगर आपने अभी एक और एक देर वॉज अ वेरी गुड आर्टिकल दैट लेपर्ड एंड द वर्ली ट्राइब्स दे आर हैविंग अ वेरी गुड लेट से एसोसिएशन सो समाइम्स एस इन महाराष्ट्र एंड सो समाइम्स दीज काइंड ऑफ आर्टिकल्स कीप कमिंग अप कि स्पेसिफिकली ट्राइब का रोल इन अ रीजन सो दैट वील ऑल्सो फॉलो फाइन यू हैव माउंटेन फॉरेस्ट माउंटेन के लिए सबसे पहले वी नो दर एरिया ओके दिस इज दैट एरिया ऑफ लाइट ग्रीन दीज आर माउंटेन फॉरेस्ट अब इसमें Out of all this, I would definitely want you to know that rhododendron is a very important example. Up, इसके सारे example आप अपने notes में add करो अभी. All these example, rhododendrons, ferns, oak, maple, juniper, and deodar. If somebody has been to let's say Nainital and all these regions, you might have even seen deodar trees, etc. But at least these five examples, I want you to know, rhododendron looks let's say very good. अगर आप इसकी image भी देखोगे, ठीक है rhododendron, please know. okay fern oak maple juniper so these are the significant trees in the region so that is how we are now segregating the our knowledge so this is the mountain temperate it means even in the colder regions whereas when you move to the subtropical part in parts of here yahan wale parts pe in parts of assam nagaland etc so here you can also have cinnamon again rhododendron sal sandan all these things the only the ones which are highlighted in black is what you should know but here for us the biggest take away will be the examples of mountain forest theek hai other than that the fifth one is mangrove us pe we have already discussed so again i'm not going to repeat the same point for mangroves fine now india has 10 bio geographic zones to ek ye fact yaad rakhna 10 zones hote hain i think if the image is not very visible i'll read it out you have the trans himalaya number 1 you have the himalayan region which is to desert and i think if somebody is struggling struggling with vegetation or species one good way is also to bring in some geography agar aapne is tarah se ek aapke paas idea hai so firstly you will also remember the kind of vegetation which will be found second what you can do easily is then try to place certain species which are famous in certain regions so for example if you see this region automatically mind mein you can think of snow leopard you can think of hangul hangul is found where दाचिगम नेशनल पार्क एक्सेट्रा सो कुछ कुछ जगहों पे जहां पे जो फेमस स्पीशीज हैं आप उनको ऐड कर सकते हो अपने दिमाग में एंड ट्राई टू थिंक ऑफ द काइंड ऑफ फॉरेस्ट फॉरेस्ट और स्पीशीज हो गई सो एड अ लेयर ऑफ सॉइल फाइन सो हियर अगेन दैट इज हाउ बायो जोग्राफी है तो बायो इज द इन्वायरमेंट वाला पार्ट जोग्राफी यू ऑलरेडी नो फाइन डेजर्ट इज देयर सो वेन यू थिंक ऑफ डेजर्ट वी हैड सीन कैमल्स वी हैड सीन कैप्टस वी देर इज ऑप्टोनिया ओके थिंक ऑफ लेट से खराई कैमल्स Now, khari camels. What is khar? Khari me khar kya hota hai? Excessive salt, salty regions. Khari camels eat what? Un, let's say what is the source for khari camels? Ghas khayenge par koi special ghas khate hain shayad. Or kuch socho? Or or? Hmm? They feed on mangroves. Or abhi jo sabse bada update ye rehta hai. because of declining mangrove population the kharai camels are under threat okay so that is also one thing just keep in mind kharai camels and by the way they can swim these sare facts hain they can swim almost ha but for them they can even go for even let's say bigger depth that is why it was important to know fine semi arid regions western ghat very important for us why it's a biodiversity hot spots across how many states western ghat is spread very good six can you tell me the name maharashtra hum kuch bhul gaye upar gujarat right so either people forget either gujarat 
और गोवा सब कुछ भूल जाओ पर गोवा नहीं भूलना चाहिए राइट ओके दिस इज वेस्टर्न घाट्स वेस्टर्न घाट्स का वेस्टर्न साइड इज हैविंग अ लॉट ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी देन यू हैव डेकन पेनिनसुला अब इस पूरे में सबसे बड़ा पार्ट कौन सा है बताओ डेकन पेनिनसुला सो फोर्टी टू परसेंट इज रफली डेकन पेनिनसुला इज एंड इट वॉज एन देर सिमिलर क्वेश्चन इन द टेस्ट हाँ तो उसमें देर इज अ ह्यूज वेरिएशन आई थिंक वी एड मैं अबाउट द गैंजेटिक प्लेन ओके सो वन इज टेन परसेंट एंड वन इज फोर्टी टू परसेंट ह्यूज वेरिएशन ओके देन यू हैव द कोस्ट इसमें भी यू नो कोरामंडल कोस्ट ओके ऑल दीज डिफरेंट कोस्ट विच आर प्रेजेंट मालाबार कोरामंडल एक्सेट्रा द नॉर्थ ईस्ट पार्ट एंड द आईलैंड आईलैंड में भी जस्ट वन टिप आई हैव बिकॉज बोथ अंडमान एंड बोथ लक्ष्मीदीप है न्यूज सो सर्टन क्वेश्चन यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट पहली बात तो रीनेमिंग ऑफ द अंडमान निकोबार आईलैंड नंबर वन सेकेंड वॉट यू शुड नो सिक्स डिग्री सेवन डिग्री एट नाइन टेन जितने हैं टेन आई थिंक यू नो वॉट इज टेन अंडमान एंड निकोबार बट फ्रॉम सिक्स टू टेन यू शुड डू दिस वंस सेकेंड बोथ द रीजन हैपन टू बी होप स्पॉट्स प्लस जो इन्वायरमेंट में वील ऑल्सो एनकाउंटर ब्लू फ्लैग बीचेज सो रिसेंटली द रिसेंट टू बीचेज मिनी क्वाइट ठुंडी एंड कार्डमार्ट बीच ऑफ लक्षदीप हैज गॉट ब्लू फ्लैग सर्टिफिकेशन सो फ्रॉम एन एनवायरमेंट एंड ऑल्सो फ्रॉम जोग्राफी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दोनों को अच्छे से करो इसको देख के यू कैन इजली टेल मी वेयर यू हैव मोर आईलैंड लक्षदीप वर्सेज अंडमान देखो फिर से एंड देर इज अज डिफरेंस मतलब कितने टाइम्स का डिफरेंस है या आंसर इज अंडमान एंड निकोबार सेकेंड वॉट इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ दीज आईलैंड फॉर बोथ और ये जो सब कुछ मैं बोल रहा हूं इंडियन फिजिकल जोग्राफी जो सॉरी ठीक है ठीक है नहीं ओरिजिन ओरिजिन बहुत एक स्पेसिफिक की वर्ड है दो कोर वाला पार्ट है अग्री सेकेंड इज इट वॉल्कैनिक आई एम सेइंग इज भाई जरूरी नहीं है ठीक है सो इफ यू आर नॉट अवेयर प्लीज रीड इट वेरी बेसिक इसमें दोनों जोग्राफी सो वेन से आइलैंड्स जनरली हम लोग क्या बात करेंगे नारकोंडम हॉर्नमिल की बात कर ली ठीक है और मे बी सम स्पेसिफिक मे बी एट्रीब्यूट वील डिस्कस बट आई वॉन्ट यू टू गो बियॉन्ड इसका बेसिक जोग्राफी एक बार कर लो ठीक है सो बी इट नेमिंग ऑल द डिग्री चैनल्स दैट विल गिव यू अ लॉट ऑफ एडवांटेज फाइन स्टिल उसमें अगर कोई दिक्कत आती है देन यू कॉन्टैक्ट मी बट अगेन पहले पुट इन एफर्ट्स फ्रॉम योर साइड ओके दीज आर द टेन बायो जोग्राफिक जोन दैट यू शूड हैव एन आइडिया अगेन आई थिंक इसमें Yes, I was telling you about Narcondum, Hornbill, etc. So uh, uh, we already know Andaman and Nicobar has evergreen forest. Great biodiversity is there, right? Second, you have. Ah, sir, you sorry, ha. Then you have <coughs> a lot of important tribes in Andaman and Nicobar. Can you tell me some names? Sentinel tribes and Shompen, Jaravas, Onges. These are the names you heard. कुछ ट्राइब्स के नाम है तो ये जस्ट जस्ट डू दिस वंस फाइन एंड यू विल बी सेट अब देखो सो व्हाट वी हैव सीन सो फार यू हैव ट्रांस हिमालया अब देखो इसमें क्या कर सकते हो टू रिमेंबर इट बेटर ऑल ऑफ यू जितनी भी स्पीशी यहां पे लिखी है द वंस विच आर हाइलाइटेड ट्राई टू लुक पुट देम इन मैप टेक अ पीस ऑफ मैप थोड़े बहुत हाथ चलाओ मैप पे अपने दिस विल हेल्प यू रिमेंबर इट बेटर ओके इफ समबडी हैज एन आई पैड आप आई पैड पर भी कर सकते हो बट आई वुड स्टिल सजेस्ट वेन यू डू इट बाई हैंड यू रिमेंबर बेटर For example, Trans Himalaya. Me, you can try to remember snow leopard, black-necked crane. One example. You have in Himalayas. You have Baral, ibex, markhor, etc. Okay, you can think about other species here. Musk deer. This was already asked once in the exam, if you remember. Then in deserts, we have already seen. Acha Karakal ke baare mein padha apne. In which, let, ne ne. Uh, sorry, what should I say? In which documents? is it mentioned or in which literary texts ha huh, species recovery program ha huh. medieval sahi maine maine yahi bola tha medieval maine kaha tha usme mujhe naam batao ha huh, sorry okay no no my question is in specific medieval text mein kis kis mein naam hai bahut famous text mein naam hai iska aur theek hai aur देर आर एटलीस्ट टू और थ्री वेरी गुड टेक्स्ट उसको याद कर सकते हो जस्ट ट्राई टू रिमेंबर दैट फाइन सो दैट इज लेट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू काराकाल 
Karakal is one of the recent additions to species recovery program. How many species do we have there? 22 as of now. Desert cat etc. You have very famous great Indian bustard, right? Which was the mascot of COP 13. Kal ki class mein humne dekha tha. Okay. Semi-arid mein let's say sambar, cheetal, lion, karakal, jackal, not that important overall. Now this becomes important. Western Ghats, because it is a biodiversity hotspot, every year in some way or the other, they'll ask you some things about Western Ghats. Isiliye one more advice I'll have. You have biosphere reserves, right? So biosphere reserves, aap koshish karo. You also try to do the biosphere reserves and specifically the area of Nilgiri. So be it Nilgiri, Agastya Malai, usme jitne bhi protected areas hain. Try to map it once, okay? For example, in Western Ghats, you have Nilgiri Langur, Lion Tailed Makak, Malabas Sivet, Nilgiri Tar, Grey Hornbill. Out of this, Nilgiri Tar again is important because the state government of Tamil Nadu, what they have done, they've created this conservation of Nilgiri Tar, a program has been now, a program chal raha liye. They've allocated money. Okay, so this is something important you should know. Other than that, in Deccan, most of the species you are already aware. Okay, Nilgai, Cheetal, Gaur, Elephant. So here nothing very substantial to tell you. Gangetic Plains, mein Rhino, Elephant, Buffalo, Swamp, Deer. Hai. Okay, Hog, Deer. What is Swamp, Deer? Swamp, Deer is Barasinga. Is it the state animal of any state? Madhya Pradesh and UP. Swamp, Deer, wahan pe hai. you also have another Swamp, Deer. That is Eastern Swamp, Deer. That is separate that you will find find in Assam and parts of Northeast. Okay, his speed here, okay, right? You have Northeast region, very high in biodiversity. We have already seen that. There is Hulok, Gibbon, Stampede, Macaque, Pigtailed, Macaque, Langur. Now, this is Gibbon. Okay, Main aap se ek, this is again a homework which I am giving you. What is the difference between, let's say, ape, sunai sabne, chimpanzee, sunai. Have you heard about orangutan? Suna hoga? Ab to suni liya hoga. Theek hai? So all these species, what is the difference? For example, when, whenever you read about gibbon, har jagah likha hoga the only ape species found in India. But hume to langur bhi milte India mein. You also have golden langur. No, no, I am saying, ye jo classification hai na, I am actually trying to tell you something, ek hai ispe chupa hua hai, something. So when I say that it is the only ape species etc. So read about what is a gibbon, what are apes, what are chimpanzees, what are bonobos, what are orangutans, what are gorillas. Ye pura pura ek classification you will try to understand. Just see the image once if possible. Isko I, like, I can explain to you this in very simple terms ki what is the classification about. Okay. Tabhi aapko samaj mein aega ki gibbons ko kyu bola jata hai the only ape species, what is langur. What is, there's a very fine difference in this, okay? And then of course we have the islands. So total you have 10 biogeographical zones that you have in India, okay? And this we move to the last part, the plant diversity of India, okay? Somebody has given the right answer. Uh, okay, one second. Okay, so it is mentioned in one of the works of Abul Fazal. But what is the name of the work? Wo padna? For Karakal, or be here, dekhna. there are some other parts which are there. Chalo, plant diversity, kyo dekhte hai? Hai? Pehli jo I think Achha, you had asked me that question yesterday about uh, sea grass. Wala. So, that it is true, it is a part of it is angiosperm. Hai? So, that is there. So again, let, let me start here. This is a very basic foundational ek hai, thode terms hai, ho sakta hai for maybe for the next five minutes, you feel slightly uncomfortable. But if you understand this once, basics clear ho jayenge aapke, once and for all. Okay. This is the plant kingdom. It is divided into cryptogams and phanerogams. Just focus on the words which I'm giving you. Cryptogam, phanerogam. Cryptogams rhymes with something cryptic, something hidden. Okay. So in cryptogams, there are two things. One, the reproductive organs are hidden okay and they reproduce through spores they do not reproduce through seeds fine cryptogams some cube bol rahe hain because india's first cryptogamic garden which was set up in dehradun was 
in the news not immediately but in the contemporary affairs right to crypto gammy garden kahan pe hai apna uttarakhand mein okay crypto gam what is a crypto gam it is not having visible reproductive organs it does not multiply or reproduce via seeds it reproduces via spores and these two things if you twist it is phanerogam it means its reproductive organs are visible and it multiplies via seeds simple theek hai to one is cryptogam one is phanerogam ab ye jo terms hain wo sabko confuse karte hain theek algae kya hai moss kya hai ferns kya hai similar lag rahe hain this image will tell you the difference okay algae for us are undifferentiated so when we start from here and when we move there is more differentiation which is happening more specialized so here no true roots stems or leaves This is algae. अब इसको कनेक्ट करो किससे सी वीड से वीड्स आर वॉट माइक्रो एलगी ओके इट डज नॉट हैव एनी ट्रू रूट सिस्टम ऑफ लीव देन एज लेट्स दिस इज लेवल वन लेवल टू क्या है मॉसेज एंड लेवल वर्ड्स ओके नाउ हियर स्लाइटली रूट और लीव लाइक स्ट्रक्चर बट स्टिल नॉट परफेक्ट बट एक एवोल्यूशन हुआ है ओके सो दिस बेसिकली इज नोन एज ये जो पहला पार्ट है इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेंबर दिस इज थैलोफाइटा थैलोफाइट्स दिस इज ब्रायोफाइट एंड दिस इज टेरोडोफाइट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेंबर अगर नहीं याद करना कोई बात नहीं सिर्फ एग्जाम्पल याद कर लो कि एक अजीब अजीब से तीन टर्म सुने थे बट एग्जाम्पल याद है एलगी था फिर मॉस था एंड देन फर्न था इफ यू रिमेंबर द सीक्वेंस दैट इज ऑल्सो गुड इनफ एलगी मॉस फर्नस बिकॉज यस दीज एग्जाम्पल्स यूल एनकाउंटर मेनी अर टाइम्स ये एग्जाम्पल आपको बहुत बार मिलेंगे ठीक है अब देखते हैं एलगी हो गया एलगी से डिफ्रेंशिएट किया मॉस ओके एंड मॉस से भी ज्यादा कैन यू सी प्रॉपर फंड अब पुट और थिंक अबाउट इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन यू हैव एन एरिया विच डज नॉट हैव एनी सॉइल सबसे पहले कौन आएगा अगर आना होगा तो सबसे पहले आते हैं लाइकन्स लाइकन्स हैव एलगी प्लस फंगस सो वो सबसे पहले आएगा बिकॉज इट इज द मोस्ट अनडिफ्रेंशिएटेड only after that can you think of something like a moss because it is slightly more differentiated so when you say mosses and lichens both do not mean the same thing mosses or lichens pe ye thoda sa difference rahega lichens as uh, sorry mosses are more differentiated and usi question mein ek aur example tha ferns ferns kaise milenge agar soil nahi hai i have to have root stems and leaves this is the most differentiated isn't it so first of all this is the part you have to understand theek we start with algae mosses and ferns and those of you who have a background ya yeah, who have a hobby of remembering tough tough names thylophytes bryophytes pteridophytes but still upsc aise naam nahi puchega at max it can ask you cryptogams kyun cryptogam news mein tha theek next next is pe aate hain phanerogams okay phanerogams mein bhi there are two cases one it does not have flowers theek hai to if you have seen conifers i gave you the example of conifer yesterday also needle like shapes needle like shape these are gymnosperms and the ones which have flowers are angiosperms so his question was basically whether the sea grasses are angiosperms or not i did say that they have they bear fruit etc but i wanted to check upon ki wo exactly is bare mein follow karte nahi karte hain to actually they do fall so they are angiosperms okay aur ek bar ye aapko taiyar ho gaya samajh mein aa gaya to na aap ise kabhi you will not be confused with any terminology Which the examiner can throw at you. Vascular may ye ho jayenge. You will have proper, let's say, root stems and leaves. They will start to begin. Non-vascular will be this. Ha. So algae ke when we define algae, usme hum likhte bhi hain ye. There it is non-vascular, and that is why when you when you talk about let's say uh, seaweed and sea grasses, that is the main point of difference that we put. ठीक है? So if this is clear to you. बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग और ये बहुत जगह हेल्प करता है दिस इज वेरी फाउंडेशनल ओके इन द सेम मैनर अगेन वी हैव डन प्लांट वाला एनिमल वाला आई विल अगेन रिक्वेस्ट यू टू डू इट सम पीपल आई नो हैव ऑलरेडी डन इट बट उसमें व्हाट यू हैव टू सी इन एनिमल किंगडम वर्टिब्रेट्स इन वर्टिब्रेट्स वर्टिब्रेट आसान है इन वर्टिब्रेट मुश्किल है इन वर्टिब्रेट में कोई एग्जाम्पल बताओ मोलस्क ठीक है अब देखो ये सारे नाम किसी किसी को बहुत टफ लग रहे हैं भाई क्या चल रहा है इस क्लास में ठीक है so uh, i also do not want to go hardcore bio right iske liye all you should do see an image and this is also for the online students many of you are also ask do you have to remember everything not really but if you do it it's good why i'll tell you 
इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एक क्वेश्चन आया था एंड दिस प्लीज ऑल्सो एट दिस एग्जाम्पल टू नोट्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग फॉलोज अम्बायोटिक रिलेशन द पहला जो पॉइंट था अभी देखते हैं किस किस को पता है द फर्स्ट पॉइंट दे मैं इज नाइडेरिया वॉट इज नाइडेरिया फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज एन इनवर्टिब्रेट अब इसका एग्जाम्पल होता हूं नाइडेरिया का तो एक्चुअली वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ नाइडेरिया इज कोरल रीफ्स एवरीबडी नोज कोरल म्यूचुअलिस्टिक एसोसिएशन बट मे बी यूर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ नाइडेरिया तो एट मैक्स यारो सुनोगे नहीं सुना है तो तुक्का मारोगे ठीक है सो वॉट आई एम सेंग स्पेंड ट्वेंटी मिनट्स नॉट मोर देन दैट इन्वर्टिव रेट का क्लासिफिकेशन वील सी ठीक इन्वर्टिव रेट में बेसिकली यू माइट गेट एक तो मैंने आपको बता दिया नाइडेरिया अदर देन दैट यू हैव एनिलिट्स यू हैव आर्थ्रोपॉर्ट्स आर्थ्रोपॉर्ट्स में भी यू हैव फोर क्लासिफिकेशन फाइन तो ये सारी चीजें देखो ऑल यू हैव टू डू जस्ट मैंशन वन एग्जाम्पल ईच जस्ट वन एग्जाम्पल ईच ओके एक बार वो एग्जाम्पल आ जाएगा खुद से देन यूल फील लॉट मतलब काफी यूल फील अलॉट मोर कंफर्टेबल ओके सो ट्राई टू डू दैट ओके इफ यू स्टिल स्ट्रगल आई एम देयर विद यू आई मेक लेट्स से आई कैन गिव यू इवन मोर इजियर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ स्टोरीज टू हेल्प कनेक्ट तो पहले एक बार करो ठीक है बिकॉज इफ आई डू इट हियर इट विल टेक अ लॉट मोर टाइम सो अगेन आई एम नॉट डूइंग इट हियर बट अगेन आई एम सेंग यू टू डू दिस बट इट विल नॉट टेक मोर देन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स देर आर लॉट ऑफ गुड इमेजेस अवेलेबल दैट शुड शॉर्ट योर वर्क ओके या हाँ ओके शुड आई रिमूव द एनोटेशन वुल दैट बी बेटर ओके नाउ जस्ट अ वेरी बेसिक्स एंड देन वी मूव टू द आवर क्वेश्चन हियर यू हैव अ हर्ब यू हैव अ श्रब यू हैव विट्री राइट सो हियर जस्ट आई थिंक यू ऑल्सो हैव पैरासाइट्स वी ऑलरेडी नो वॉट पैरासाइट्स आर वी ऑलरेडी नो वॉट इज एपीफाइट्स What is epiphyte? Right. Yes. Good example. Not nourished by the host plant. This is what we'll remember. We also have more questions in this test with pro proper examples. Okay. That we'll see. Herb, shrub, tree, etc. So again, herb is this one, right? Stem, etc. Is green. Very short, less than one meter. This is very static part. Not going in too much of detail. बट जस्ट सम टर्म्स दैट यू शुड बेस्ट हैव अ फेयर विजुअल आइडिया ओके पैरासाइट्स में बस एक चीज याद रखना इट हैज दीज हॉस्टोरिया विच आर नोन एज हॉस्टोरल रूट ओके सो पैरासाइट्स आर नोन एज दिस हॉस्टोरल रूट ओके अच्छा somebody has an issue with this. I think uh, you're not able to attend the test online. Is that the problem, नायनिका so here so you have climbers etc that will climb up a tree okay you have epiphytes epiphytes please remember commensalism as an example you have parasites tree etc this is a basic classification that is there okay nothing very substantial but only thing i have to tell you parasite the name is this hostoral roots okay then you have parts of a tree in this also there are certain things and i think one question was asked very specific i think cambium etc we asked we had asked you isme i think trunk everybody knows what's a trunk you have this foliage fruit branch twig leaf i think that is not a problem in roots also the roots which will grow at least this side these are lateral roots there are tap roots also which will go deep inside acha ye bolte bolte ek aur cheez yaad dilao let tell me what is xylem and what is phloem we'll start with xylem xylem is for Water and what is flowing for? Water. Which is unidirectional? Which is bidirectional? Xylem is uni. Phloem is bi. ठीक है ये ध्यान रखना. This also is important to know. Now in parts of a trunk, can you see growth rings? Can we tell about the age of a tree through the growth rings? This is actually known as dendrochronology. ठीक है ये term used होता है. This core part is known as the pith. Okay. And other than that, you have a heart wood, you have a sap wood, etc. You have a cambium. अब इसको एक बार बस देख लेते हैं quickly. Uh, and then we move to this part. So annual rings are there. This is so this is known as dendro chronology. This is how you remember the life of a tree. Uh, fine. Second, you have a bark, etc. We already know that. We had seen the example of cinchona tree, जो उसके outside bark से you are able to treat malaria through that, right? So that was one. 
then what is cambium can anybody tell me so cambium is going to make in this case it is going to add to the thickness of a tree it is going to make new cells every year okay so it makes new cells and this will help the tree to grow wider that is the part of cambium okay other than that sap wood is bringing water and nutrients and hard wood is the hardest wood of this tree okay so sap wood is what closely related to xylem and the sap sorry hard wood is the hardest part of this tree that is why it is darker in color if you see right hard wood and sap wood okay and other than that this is the most protected pith is the most core part fine ab roots may be tap root lateral root is one buttress roots where did, did we read about in mangroves these are for support okay we have prop roots prop roots are also for support used by mangroves stilt ye sare ke sare cheeze you find in mangroves prop roots buttress roots stilt roots pneumatophores are aerial breathing roots right hostorial roots just abhi bataya the moment you see the word hostorial think parasitic these are roots of parasitic plants for example the example b if you want please write down mistletoe or dodder in fact i'll also give you examples of insectivorous wo bhi humne pucha hai aap se i think in two questions so these are some things if they ask you a tough question you will be well prepared okay i think yes the uh, pdfs are password protected you have to i think your email id is your password yes hmm banyan tree for support may i think some of them are both a mixture of prop and buttress roots jo puri bahar se nikalte hain theek hai banyan tree bhi we have questions right hmm banyan tree mein bhi ek do aur cheeze batani mujhe aapko interesting theek hai this is one part talking of invasive plant species a couple of names extra from what you already know prosopis juliflora is one we have already seen that also known as vilayati keeker also known as angreji babul okay it was from mexico okay so again that is one it is affecting wild ass population in kutch in gujarat one it is also affecting other parts of india so it is also affecting parts of south india in many parts it's also affecting delhi okay so this is again a problem so you, you can see this is aggressive colonizer water greedy generally you will find these attributes with invasive species, well, let's say plant species fine then i'll just go through the names isme se jo important i think parthenium suna hoga congress grass or carrot grass parthenium is one there is black mimosa so this is also a woody or let's say invasive species lantana very famous okay so this is was in news this was also seen in kanha this always has been a news in bandipur tiger reserve it is also responsible for forest fires there okay you also have the siam weed this is there now ye important hai thoda sa sena spectabilis now this is found in nilgiri and it is also found in mudu malai okay in mudu malai tiger reserve or mudu malai national park the name is sena spectabilis main thing is it's a part of legume family but still what is it it is a invasive species okay invasive species mein i know there are lot of names which ultimately come up All you have to do last में exam से पहले invasive species में जितने भी example आपने देखे हैं please write them down once in one page. It should not exceed one page. I'm pretty sure. And by the end you would always remember eucalyptus जो आसान है वो आपको याद रहेंगे. But the ones which are there in the current affairs that is what you can add. Okay. So that is there. Now there is also a small we have asked you one particular example on medicinal plants. Okay. So yes सर गंदा पूछा है आपसे एक ये टर्म देखिएगा भी जस्ट प्लीज कीप दिस इन माइंड साइकैट्स ओके व्हाई बिकॉज आई विल शेयर अ इंफोग्राफिक विद यू अदर देन दैट देखो जस्ट सो यू हैव दिस बेडोम साइट यू हैव ब्लू वैंडा यू हैव दिस पर्टिकुलर ऑर्चिड सर्बगंधा अब इसमें क्या है अ लॉट ऑफ देम हैव अ लॉट ऑफ मेडिसिनल प्रॉपर्टीज एंड नॉट जस्ट दिस अगर आप इसमें और हर्ब्स और श्रब्स को भी एड करोगे लेट से यू एड ब्राह्मी many of you would be aware of ashwagandha and all of that so isme there are a lot of medicinal plants so sometimes a match the following kind of a question can be asked in this theek hai to ab isme what we have seen generally just say for example uh, this bedomis is being used for rheumatoid uh, arthritis muscle pains okay i'll only go through the more important ones sarbagandha 
Now this is important for a lot of uh, sorry nervous system disorders etc. Right? Intestine disorders. Okay. Sciatics, sciatics, or these this this has come twice. These are gymnosperms. Is ko abhi yaad rakhenge because of a IUCN infographic. Okay. This was the one I was telling to you about. Arug pacha. Used by Kani tribes. ठीक है. यहाँ पे we were able to strike a good deal with a certain MNC, and this is where the biopiracy did not happen. Here, bio prospecting actually happened. Okay, so there was a win-win situation. So they actually created a particular plant. These Kani tribe groups are found in Agastya Malai Biosphere Reserve, very old primitive groups. Kani, ठीक है? और इन्होंने ये बनाया है medicinal plant Arogi Pacha. Okay. Antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory. So this was used in a lot of case studies throughout. You can find way, बहुत articles मिल जाएंगे आपको इस पे. Okay, Arogi Pacha पे. Endemic to Agastya Agastya Hills and ultimately Agastya Malay Biosphere Reserves. वहाँ से we'll remember the Kani tribes, K A N I, very old primitive types. Okay. Then you have insectivorous plant. Why do you think insectivorous plants exist? हाँ देखो बेसिकली इट इज नॉट दैट दे कैन नॉट डू फोटोसिंथेसिस फोटोसिंथेसिस दे कैन डू दे कैन हैव फूड बट दे आर प्रेजेंट इन सॉइल्स एक्सेट्रा विच आर लैकिंग इन नाइट्रोजन सो दे विल ईट अप प्लांट्स जस्ट लाइक यू ईट अप सप्लीमेंट्स ओके सो लेट्स से यू डाइट लैक्स इन यू डू नॉट ईट इन ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स एक्सेट्रा यू ईट वाइटमिन इनके लिए वाइटमिन क्या हो जाएंगे एनिमल सॉरी दीज इंसेक्ट्स फाइन so here we have venus fly trap you have a pitcher plant etc okay and some of them have active mechanisms passive mechanisms this we'll see specifically when we see the questions that are more applied in nature they have chlorophyll please remember and they do photosynthesis sometimes we think that they are present in some areas jahan light nahi aati hai and when photosynthesis is not possible that is why they do it please know they lack or they are present in nitrogen deficient or nutrient deficient soils insectivorous or carnivorous plant okay so very prominent examples are these kal ki class mein i mentioned this sea buckthorn okay so for example himachal pradesh etc it wants to let's say start its cultivation it has a lot of benefits vitamin c mental clarity okay omega 6 3 so on and so forth ab isme kya hai what is this it's a shrub and you see this orange yellow these are edible berries which it creates theek hai to ye hai sea buckthorn and it is being planted in the cold desert areas yesterday when i was telling you desert in that cold deserts i mentioned this that ladakh himachal mein sea buckthorn is being used a lot so this is actually sea buckthorn so it also has medicinal benefits additionally economic benefits bhi hain if the farmer cultivates they will get more revenue so that is also their sea buckthorn okay what are these very good living root bridges okay now these are made of chalo pehla part sahi hai pehla part sahi although there are other varieties starting with this also yeah so you have this yeah rubber tree correct ficus elastica okay so these are aerial bridges ab isse pehle upsc has already asked you a question on Loctuck Lake and Fumdis, floating vegetation. So maybe this can be a prominent question, and this has been a site many of the foreigners do visit it. You also, let's say, Joe, be dekhta hai. So these are the living root bridges. So these are Ficus elastica or Indian river tree. Again, in Meghalaya, that is one thing you have to know, and this is to cross. Fine. Other than that, there was this Pistrodia lalji or Pyrostria lalji. Now here it grows fast, or it is tall in height. Number one. second please remember it is critically endangered out of a lot of varieties this is the one this is critically endangered that is why this is slightly more important tall in height okay and belongs to a gene a genus of a coffee family so this was also in the news so i'm just mentioning this as well and the last is this dracaena cambodiana india's first true uh, sorry dragon tree species okay so here what is there so again this is there in west karbi onglong region of assam okay and this is the dragon tree species used for medicine body oil etc fungal antibacterial compounds so these are few things or few prominent plant varieties that you should or we should be aware about okay what is this 
నీకు గురించి బ్లూమ్స్ ఇన్ ఎవ్రీ ట్వెల్వ్ డేస్ ట్వెల్వ్ వీక్స్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఇయర్స్ ట్వెల్వ్ మంత్స్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఇయర్స్ ఠీక్ ఏ స్పెక్టాక్యులర్ సైట్ ఆఫ్ ఇరావికులం నేషనల్ పార్క్ కేరళ అప్ ఇరావికులం సే మే ఏక ఆర్ చీజ్ యాద్ రైగి నీల్ గిరి తార్ ఓకే ఓకే సో దిస్ ఆల్సో ఐ థింక్ యూ ఆల్రెడీ హ్యావ్ ఎ క్వశ్చన్ ఆన్ దిస్ సో వో మా పే దేఖేంగే అండ్ ద లాస్ట్ బిఫోర్ వి ఐ థింక్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ ద టెస్ట్ రెడ్ శాండర్స్ వాట్ ఇస్ దిస్ ab pehli baat to why first of all it is having a lot of demand in the market bahut zara smuggling hai you have would have already seen movies on this right ab pehli baat to what is this is this evergreen or deciduous first point it is deciduous right now this also has of course it is known for illicit filling smuggling has rich hue therapeutic properties in is it demand in southeast asia etc important furniture wood products in sab mein use hota hai musical instruments mein and very important point endemic somebody mentioned in this class it is endemic to theek hai but you can overall eastern ghats okay but ha of course we, we can be even more specific if you want with the hills also to andhra pradesh mein right right and when he says shesha chala mein andhra pradesh also remember jardan corsar bhi kahan hai it is in andhra pradesh but where is it sri lanka maleshwar wildlife sanctuary okay sri lanka maleshwar wildlife sanctuary chhot thoda sa lamba naam hai <laughs> okay but this that is in andhra pradesh not in sri lanka ha wo dhyan rakhenge neel kurun ji dekh liya abhi apne okay this was the fact i was going to tell you if you open or google iucn red list this is what you will get okay the maximum species or the species under maximum threat is amphibians sabse zyada amphibians threat mein if i talk about animals and if i talk about plants do what do you have cycads jo abhi humne dekha 70% sabse zyada threat kisko hai please again note amphibians and we did ask you this amphibian pe sawal hai can you make a guess aisa kyu hota hai i'll i'll explain कोल्ड ब्रेड पर और भी होते हैं कोल्ड ब्रेड रेप्टाइल्स आर ऑल्सो कोल्ड ब्रेड अब बताओ फिश आर ऑल्सो कोल्ड ब्रेड सो वाई एम्फीबियंस जस्ट अ गेस और कुछ इट इज रिलेटेड टू देम उनमें कुछ ऐसी चीज है उसकी वजह से दे आर अंडर द मोस्ट ट्रेथ एनी थिंग एल्स एनी थिंग विद स्किन सोचो दे इसको बोलते हैं सब क्यूटेनियस रेस्पिरेशन दे ब्रीथ थ्रू दे स्किन एम्फीबियंस these toads frogs salamanders right so because if the air quality if, if there is any issue in that they will be breathing that to so, isiliye they are under the most threat kuch bhi chemical disruption if there is any change they are the ones and this is the most recent fact abhi ka agar aap data dekhoge i use i use insights says only two things you know about i use in red list within that you will see more than 44000 species under threat and out of that amphibians are under the most problem ठीक है दैट इज वन थिंग ओके नाउ विल स्टार्ट द पीपल यू कैन ओपन योर टेस्ट सॉरी सब क्यूटेनियस रेस्पिरेशन प्रवीण आई थिंक दिस इज द फॉर्मैट विच इज देयर सो वी आर गोइंग टू फॉलो दिस फॉर्मैट वेर इन वी फर्स्टली डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देन वी गो फॉर द डिस्कशन ओके now a lot of the questions which we have already discussed i think would be easier for you to solve right but still in any case we'll go through all the questions so we start with acha there are enough questions in the test okay Pra praveen i am li listening to you please do mention it in the comment section koi bhi aisa issue hoga so i'll just respond immediately so we start with question number 1 these are smaller easier questions which of the following is used specifically to denote species whose disappearance may lead to ecosystem dysfunction keystone species how many of you got it right sabka hua hoga sahi theek hai flagship you know priority you also know priority species given by wwf you have umbrella species right which color umbrella do they use koi 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 logic in is baat ka theek next which of the following do not classify, classify as foundation species now this is we are asking not like this but like this okay 
do not classify as a foundation species kelps are foundation species corals are also foundation sea grasses are also foundation theek hai all the three are there so kaun si nahi hai none which is not there though this is going to be none okay online students can also quickly respond i am also listening to this your answers here chalo ye bhi which of the following is correctly matched corals act as autogenic engineers bhai acha autogenic ka matlab kya hota hai one second okay one one second i'll go back to the previous question ha somebody is asking how sea grasses are foundation species foundation species are actually for example when they are present so let's say ye kelps hain these are microalga these are sea grasses so based on that all the other species are going to eat from them they are going to survive so it is because of that sea grasses become the foundation species rhea is that clear Paresh also has the same doubt that how are sea grasses? Is the part clear that sea grasses are also very foundational? Let's say for dugong or for other aquatic species, they are very widespread, and the destruction of these sea grasses can lead to a lot of problems. In that sense, they will be setting up the foundation for the aquatic life. So, if you think kelps can be one, so why don't you think uh, sea grasses cannot be right? so we can use the same logic to justify kelps also sea grasses also okay and corals also right paresh and ria theek hai ha coming to this lantana camera hai filter feeder hai kaun sa pehle to galat aapne kaun sa hataya hai kisko hai theek hai pehli baat filter feeders are very small tiny species okay filter feeders are not your umbrella species okay filter feeders in general we uh, if you if you talk of umbrella species i'll go for still bigger species first of all these are very smaller species in general so filter feeders are not these umbrella species can you give me example of filter feeders oyster and mussels clam and maine ek whale ka naam bataya tha kal baleen whales okay all these are filter feeders but filter feeders are not the umbrella species in marine environment second lantana camera is it an invasive species at kanha tiger reserve it is okay and please also add if you do not remember kana uh, sorry lantana is very famous or infamous in the region of bandipur so if you do not know bandipur tiger reserve etc usko bhi likho kyunki bandipur mein if there is a forest fire sorry acha theek hai if there is a forest fire etc that is attributed to this and even in karnataka i think some of you would be aware that under mg narega removal of lantana is mentioned ठीक है तो वहां पे प्रॉपरली इट यू कैन इमेजिन सच अ बिग थ्रेट बट इट इज आल्सो न्यूसेंस इन कान्हा ओके सिमिलरली प्रोसेपिस जूली फ्लोरा है इट आल्सो इज अ न्यूसेंस इन लेट्स से सदर्न पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया इट्स आल्सो इशू इन नदर्न पार्ट्स या इन दिल्ली इट्स आल्सो एन इशू इन गुजरात प्रोसेपिस जूली फ्लोरा फॉर एग्जांपल कोरल्स कैन एक्ट एज ऑटोजेनिक इंजीनियर्स बेसिकली एक टर्म होता है जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल Ecosystem engineers etc. So यहाँ पे भी corals में they can help and get overall coral will have a lot of biodiversity. They'll support a lot of ecosystems. So in that sense they can act as autogenic engineers. तो यहाँ पे answer है only two pairs are correct. Question number three में ठीक है? So answer is B only two. Now this question is actually tough to do in the exam hall. Okay? Because first of all you have to know दोनों में कितनी countries हैं उसमें भी common कौन सी हैं? In this question, actually, जो जो three, four, five mentioned है, वो है ही नहीं countries. That was easier. But this question could have been far more difficult. अब आप कहोगे सर इससे ज़्यादा क्या difficult बनेगा? That if actually common countries में कुछ और पूछते, यहाँ पे the answer actually is first of all, let me tell you, mega diverse you already know. Quickly tell me who gives it and what is the criteria. Hmm. हा हा मरीन मरीन एंड बाय डब्ल्यू सी एम सी वर्ल्ड कंजर्वेशन मॉनिटरिंग सेंटर राइट उसमें होता है कि नहीं होता है अच्छा एक सुनुक जाओ प्लीज एक्सप्लेन ऑटोजेनिक एक बार आई गो बैक एंड एक्सप्लेन देखो ऑटोजेनिक इंजीनियर्स इज सिमिलर टू अ कॉन्सेप्ट नोन एज इकोसिस्टम इंजीनियर्स 
we have ecosystem engineers like elephants in the aquatic systems if corals are these autogenic engineers it means they can change a lot of geography in the region by geography the habitat and distribution of other species to so coral may we know that they support a great level of biodiversity 2018 mein ek bahut specific question aaya tha corals pe ab ye chalo let me see how many of you remember that question tell me whether what i'm saying is true or false corals support a greater diversity of animal phyla as compared to plant phyla it is true theek hai but here maybe somebody can get confused ki plant zyada hai animal zyada hai animal zara wala zara support karta hai in animal of course crustaceans etc there are lot of them which it supports okay so coral leaves pehli baat it supports huge levels of biodiversity and it can also make the changes in the biodiversity the way it interacts constantly there are let's say calcification process which keeps on happening because of carbonate ions okay shells etc will be happening you will have the algae the zooxanthellae which will give it give that its color and this will support a huge ton of biodiversity overall so in that sense it is able to or it acts as an autogenic engineer number 1 which is why if coral bleaching happens or the death of coral happens the entire ecosystem is under a lot of threat तो थ्रेट सबसे ज्यादा आती है इफ कोरल्स डाई नंबर वन एंड ऑल्सो वेन योर सी ग्रासेस ऑल दीज फाउंडेशनल स्पीशीज ये जो भी फाउंडेशन स्पीशीज इफ दे आर डैमेज दैट विल कॉज अ प्रॉब्लम ओशियन एसिडिफिकेशन तीनों को हार्म करेगा बस सबसे ज्यादा हार्म करेगा कोरल्स को वाई बिकॉज बाय सो सॉरी कार्बोनेट आयन विल बिकम बाय कार्बोनेट आयन एंड एक्चुअली जो कोरल एक जो भी कैल्शियम द स्पीशीज विच नीड कैल्शियम दे वॉन्ट कार्बोनेट आयन but jo excess h plus aayega that will react and it will it will form bicarbonate so over a period of time the calcium uh, based calcifying species will lessen in number so then they cannot be ecosystem or autogenic engineers that will also cause a problem okay moving on yes in this case this is a slightly factual question but here i'll just firstly tell you first of all there is a mega diverse group then in 2002 mexico formed a separate organization LMCC and again one thing to know here India had joined this so there was a Cancun declaration of 2002 and India is a party to this okay ab yahan pe kya hai there are total 17 countries here in uh, mega diverse in LMCC there are total 20 countries which is of course mentioned in your model answer you can go through that but again you i am it is not very easy to remember all of them yahan pe the answer is actually India and in Indonesia In fact, these three are even not present. If you see Vietnam, can you see Vietnam? Hey, nee. Laos hai, hey, hey, nee. Cambodia hai, nee hai. So, yahan pe question puchre. It is common to two. If you remembered only, let's say, a diagram like this. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Acha, ठीक है, ठीक है, ठीक है. But it then would not be common to this, right? So that is there. Although you would be saying, sir, abhi seventeen yaad nahi hure, but once. UPSC also asked you countries of G20, okay? And I think वो मैपिंग्स हो जाता है, right? वो भी सही है. ये 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 मुश्किल है, मुश्किल है. I I totally agree with you, agree with you. एक बार देख लो, if धोखे से अगर स्टिक कर गया हो गया, but I'm not sure they will go in so much of detail. But for us, what do you need to know? The concept of mega diverse countries and something known as group of like-minded mega diverse countries. Okay. अब यहाँ पे there is also one extra thing that I'll tell you. All biodiversity hotspots contain at least one global ecoregion. Number one, all they have been accorded UNESCO of WHS, and these exist within 60 to 60 north and 60 south. Out of this, which you think can be a weak link? कोई गा कौन से गलत हो सकता है? Third, second, okay. देखो, if you go beyond 60 degree north, it will be too cold. तो वहां पे दिक्कत क्या होगी यू विल नॉट फाइंड बिकॉज देन यू आर ऑलरेडी क्रॉसिंग द टेम्परेट रीजन तो एक्चुअली स्पीकिंग द बायोडेस्टी हॉटस्पॉट आर नॉट फाउंड बियॉन्ड दिस लिमिट ओके सेकेंड इज ऑल बायोडेस्टी हॉटस्पॉट है इंडिया केस में फॉर एग्जाम्पल ये एंटायर वेस्टर्न घाट हैज बिन अकॉर्डेड बट देन इन केस ऑफ यूएस देर आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर इज दिस कैलिफोर्निया फ्लोरिस्टिक प्रोविंस ओके which is a biodiversity hotspot but it is still not a unesco world heritage site theek hai so this becomes wrong ab jo pehla statement hai all biodiversity hotspots contain at least one global ecoregion so i'll tell you again wwf 
का एक डॉक्यूमेंट है स्लाइटली ओल्ड डॉक्यूमेंट बट दिस इज ग्लोबल टू हंड्रेड सो फॉर डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ आई डिट टेल यू लिविंग प्लान रिपोर्ट वन थिंग एक्स्ट्रा इज ग्लोबल टू हंड्रेड ओके अब इस टू हंड्रेड में वन फोर्टी टू टेरिस्ट्रियल फ्रेश वॉटर मरीन अ लॉट ऑफ रीजन आर प्रेजेंट ओके एंड ओवरऑल बायोडाइवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट ऑफ थर्टी सिक्स ओके सो एक्चुअली दिस इज ट्रू सो इट डज कंटेन एटलीस्ट वन ग्लोबल टू हंड्रेड इको रीजन ओके अगेन वन टेक अवे कैन बी द ग्लोबल टू हंड्रेड इको रीजन इज गिवन बाई डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ ओके एंड दिस पार्ट राइट सो फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव द आंसर बिकम्स ओनली टू ओके सो वन एंड थ्री इज करेक्ट टू इज रॉन्ग ओके अब ये टर्म है सो so मैंने आपसे बोला था कि आई टेल यू अवर कंजर्वेशन एंड इंटरनेशनल थ्री टाइम्स दो बार हो गया दिस इज थर्ड दिस टर्म इिकवरेबल कार्बन इज एक्चुअली अ टर्म पॉपुलराइज बाय कंजर्वेशन इंटरनेशनल ओके सो फर्स्ट इज लेट एस सी वॉट दिस टॉक्स अबाउट द बॉडी इज कंजर्वेशन इंटरनेशनल नंबर वन वॉट इज इिकवर इिकवरेबल कार्बन द प्लेसेस वी कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू लूज ओके so basically it is talking about tropical rainforests mangroves peatlands and temperate rainforest these are the four regions it is talking about number 1 by the way how does it map the irrecoverable carbon regions so it is through cloud computing and use of remote sensing to ye jo puri image banayi hai so the technology used is simple remote sensing that is one thing that is being done okay now here how do they define it irrecoverable carbon is the stores of carbon in nature which is vulnerable to be released because of human activity okay and if this thing is getting lost for some reason etc so we would not be able to hit the target of net zero net zero mein global target is 2050 india's target is 2070 okay china's target is 2060 yeah fine ab isi mein we, let's let's say to emphasize this so 24% area here is actually protected out of this ye thoda sa important hai that 75% of this carbon is located in just 7.5% of the land area in one slide there is a lot of information here i agree but again this is one thing the moment you open the site of conservation international you will be brought to this air recoverable carbon okay so acha if you want to theek hai ha so this is what you can just have a look at so i've just made it from other sources which are mentioned so one is the body this is the definition this is the map they use through remote sensing these are the four areas they define okay and generally speaking carbon etc jo bhi store hogi it has to be stored in the carbon sink what is the biggest carbon sink oceans and then what about forest फॉरेस्ट आर ऑल्सो सिंक और नॉट दे आर एंड ऑल्सो वेटलैंड आर बिगर सिंह एंड उसमें भी सबसे बड़े हैं पीट लैंड पीट लैंड आर ग्रेट सिंक ओके नाउ कमिंग टू द क्वेश्चन शेयर इ रिकवरेबल कार्बन रिफर्स टू वास्ट स्टोर्स ऑफ कार्बन एक्सेट्रा तो बेसिक डेफिनेशन पूछ दी आपसे दिस इज ट्रू नंबर वन इट इज स्टोर्ड इन ट्रॉपिकल रेन फॉरेस्ट ट्रू वेटलैंड ट्रू पोलर आइस दिस इज नॉट ट्रू ओके so because of that this becomes wrong so again a very fine detail nearly 1/10 of earth's land area contains 75% of irrecoverable carbon this is true because almost 7.5 we are asking nearly 1/10 okay but again this is a fact through which you can just have a understanding this can be asked also in the concept of carbon sequestration अब इसको उल्टी तरह से कैसे पूछ सकते हैं विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैन हेल्प इन कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन और इज अ नेचुरल कार्बन सिंक ऑल द फोर विल विल बी देयर इज इंट इट वन क्वेश्चन कैन बी हाउ हैव द डन इट थ्रू रिमोट सेंसिंग तो ऐसा भी नहीं है कि जस्ट ऑल दीज फैक्ट्स आर फ्रॉम थिन एयर देव एक्चुअली डन द हार्ड वर्क सो दिस इज वन थिंग आई वॉन्ट यू टू नो एंड अगेन वन थिंग वुड बी इफ इफ पॉसिबल ट्राई टू कलर कोड द प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज एंड बॉडीज बाई डिफरेंट कलर्स so after the end of the sessions jo bhi aapke paas let's say conservation international hua last mein na sare initiative of the bodies you should try to compile it in one page or in one part otherwise if it is randomly scattered in many areas it is not very easy to recall okay but this should be done after you are done with all all the six test theek hai hmm 
all high biodiversity wilderness areas are situated at the south of brant line what is brant line good 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 brant line is this developed countries least developed countries how many of you agree with the concept of brant line hum to nahi bolenge of course theek hai of course again uh, so something of this should not exist in the modern world as of now but theek hai bhi ab question kya hai all high ha, i had mentioned five areas can now you answer this they are situated south of the brant line कोई ऐसा एरिया है नॉर्थ में भी जो था आई हैड शोन यू इमेज बट आई नो अभी एकदम से रिकॉल नहीं हुआ होगा चलो लेट अस सी नॉर्थ अमेरिकन डेजर्ट इट इज समवेयर हियर इट इज टू द नॉर्थ ऑफ इट टोटल देर आर फाइव एरियाज बट अगेन दिस इज अगेन फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेशन एंड नॉलेज टू कॉन्सेप्ट वन वॉट इज ब्रांड लाइन ग्लोबल नॉर्थ ग्लोबल साउथ दिस इज आई थिंक अराउंड नाइनटीन एटीज दिस क्लासिफिकेशन एट कम अबाउट ओके so and there are five amazon congo new guinea okay the regions of south africa and then the north american desert all right to ye hai okay this boundary acha the second point question number 7 mein the boundaries of this do not coincide here mein in this case this is actually true the boundaries do not coincide okay in both the cases the boundaries are slightly separate you can i think answer question number 3 statement number 3 group 7 g7 don't have any hbwa hai abhi dekha humne theek hai so this becomes wrong so for question number 7 the answer becomes a only one okay right hmm this is a good question that you should be aware about purely applied question let us see the question is on biopiracy okay academic development of genetic resources by this without obtaining prior consent can be termed as biopiracy isn't that the basic definition of biopiracy theek hai question number 8 mein pehla part sahi hai question kya puch raha hai incorrect theek hai first is correct nagoya aims at preventing biopiracy and it is legally binding on the parties true sahi hai If this was Cartagena, it would have been wrong. Cartagena is related to LMOs, GMOs. Th yes, yes, bio safety. Now, third question: How many of you marked it incorrect? Normal, बता सकते हो. You thought BDA two thousand two. नहीं नहीं जिन्होंने incorrect किया है. अच्छा वो तो फिर वो silly mistake हो गई आपकी. नहीं नहीं but किसी ने ऐसा सोचा क्योंकि ये भी बहुत valid है. If I was at your stage, if I would have only read about, let's say BDA, मैं सीधे सोचता इन्होंने एक्ट गलत कर दिया है क्योंकि सारे मेजर प्रोविजन रिलेटेड टू बायोपैरिस आर मैं इन बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड टू यू थॉट दैट एनी बडी एल्स यू थॉट दिस एंड देन मार्क डेट रॉन्ग आपने सोचा तो अब इसमें एक चीज जो एक्स्ट्रा बताऊंगा आई ऑल्सो ये एग्जैक्ट फर्स्ट राइट एक्ट का जो एक जो लाइन में उठा के लाया हूं तो पहली बात देखते हैं Forest Rights Act में the right to access to biodiversity, community rights, intellectual property, traditional knowledge related to this is a part of this. So first of all, not only BDA 2002, but even FRA supports Nagoya and prevents biopiracy. Other than that, Indian Patents Act, Protection of Plant Varieties Act, GI Act, and this of course FRA Act. All this is going to promote better traditional knowledge. So this is going one step beyond. बट जनरली स्पीकिंग इसमें जो एक्ट नहीं लिखा है ऑफ कोर्स दैट ऑल्सो प्रिवेंट्स बायोपैरेसी इज द मेजर एक्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड टू इनफैक्ट यू शुड रीड मोर अबाउट इट यू हैव नेशनल बायोडाइवर्सिटी अथॉरिटी स्टेट बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड एंड बी एम सीज बायोडाइवर्सिटी मैनेजमेंट कमिटीज विच क्रिएट अ पी बी आर पॉपुलेशन बायोडाइवर्सिटी रजिस्टर विच इज इन लाइन विद द नगोया प्रोटोकॉल इस साल एक क्वेश्चन बी एम सीज पे आया था इज एनी बडी अवेयर अबाउट इट riya there are uh, the list is not very long for example for uh, un ccd i did mention it was legally binding but there are very few which would overall be legally binding so over a period of time at least for environment you will have a fair idea that would not be a problem but again the people who are watching this please also see the paper of 2023 you will get another question on bmc please see that ha huh, this is slightly in more detail 
एंड ओरिजिनेटिंग कंट्री ओके सो दिस अगेन क्वेश्चन में क्या पूछा है द प्रोवाइडर कंट्रीज जिसमें डू नॉट हैव द राइट टू कंट्रोल जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेस फाउंड विद इन द एरिया इस क्वेश्चन में समझने से पहले फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ओरिजिनेटिंग कंट्री लेट्स इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडिया ठीक है थिंक अबाउट इंडिया If India has a particular neem, any variety neem, tulsi, ashwagandha, etc., and originating, मतलब if the genetic resource exists in India, does the or, uh, originating country have a right to it? It has a right to it. तो पहली बात ये तो statement सही होना चाहिए. It would have a right to it. पर हाँ इसपे क्या पूछा है? They do not have. तो उसमें हम at the when while marking we'll see. But overall, just as an idea, this is true. It, the originating country should have a right. Second question में देखो, second में, originating country where genetic resources exist X C2 under CBD. Now think about it. Now this is actually a very fine reading of Nagoya Protocol. तो होता क्या है? It is also there in in C2. It is also there X C2. So if the genetic resources falling falling outside my natural jurisdiction तो अब इसमें क्या करेंगे जो दूसरी country है that country if it is a signatory of CBD then I can get that हाँ maybe yeah something like that yeah तो country here what will happen you can obtain it from originating originating country under CBD so CBD इस तरह से fair and equitable access to genetic resource करता है Otherwise, we would only think if something is found within our country. So there can be certain things which can be XC2 also, maybe. So if we want to get that, it should be under the confines of CBD Convention on Biological Re Diversity. Now, third question purely applied. Hai. Batao, kyun? If you are saying it is XC2 allowed, then why is it wrong? No, this is also under CBD. It is under CBD. It is under CBD and so this is a purely applied question on our detailed reading of Nagoya protocol. Okay. So here in India is introducing these cheetahs in Kuno, but under the confines or under the framework of CBD. So if you are getting any product, any of the resources from a country which is following CBD, then you will have this, let's say. So what should be the answer here? Do not ask. In this case, do not ask. In this case, हाँ कौन सा पार्ट पूरा सवाल ठीक है देखो क्या है यू हैव अ कंट्री जैसे इंडिया की बात करें इंडिया कोई मेरे को कोई एक एग्जांपल बताओ जेनेटिक रिसोर्स का इंडिया में एनी वन एग्जांपल ऑफ जेनेटिक रिसोर्स फ्रॉम इंडिया कोई भी हो सकता है थिंक ऑफ एनी प्लांट कोई भी प्लांट स्पीशी हमारे यहाँ मिलती है टर्मेरिक चलो ले लेते हैं टर, टर्मेरिक ठीक ये ठीक है एग्जाम्पल आप अपने एग्जाम्पल बता सकते हो आप बोल सकते हो आई डोंट लाइक हल्दी इन माई दाल आई प्रेफर सिनेमन ठीक है we take one of this ठीक so the point is we are in originating country पहली बात तो it is a part of my territory it is a part of my jurisdiction so I will have the entire resources to it keep this in mind कि I am discussing to you overall the concept of bio piracy तो पहली बात if something is in C2 in my area या जो भी तो I will have the full let's say authority otherwise the people from outside can misuse it which will lead to bio piracy तो पहली बात और इसमें क्या है how do we control the right or access to genetic resources in the jurisdiction? So that is why we had signed CBD, Convention on Biological Diversity. LMO, GMO ko bhi bhul jau. Abhi hum baat kare zyada Nagoya ki. Okay? So first of all, I think first part is correct, in C2. But it can also happen ex C2. So what if, to yaha pe, let's say, originally, jaha pe term likha hai, think of India. Maybe there is an example of any resource which is outside. It can be, First of all, we had the Indian subcontinent. Now we have so you have so many boundaries. Okay, so maybe in the Himalayan regions, which maybe overlaps with some of the country, वहाँ पे हमारे कोई ऐसा resource है. तो this we can still have it. So even if it is outside the natural habitat, we can still obtain the resource provided the country which is giving to us is under CBD. So if the country is under CBD, then we can still have the rights of that genetic resources. नहीं मैं नहीं 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 ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है इफ इट इज देन 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 दिस कैन हैपन मैंडेटरी नहीं है बिकॉज क्यों नहीं मैंडेटरी आप बताओ चलो कन्वेंशन आर नॉट बियॉन्ड सॉवरन पार्स इट शुड नॉट इन्फ्रिंच बट यस इफ दी इफ द टू कंट्रीज आर एंड व्हाट इफ दीज कंट्रीज आर शेयरिंग बॉर्डर्स दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉन्टेक्स कैन हैपन इन बॉर्डर्स 
बट इन दिस केस इट इज हैपनिंग इंटर कॉन्टिनेंट हमारे में क्या हुआ अच्छा इसका भी वन ऑफ द रीजन इज वाई डिड वी फाइनली ब्रिंग एफ्रीकन चीताज वन 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 इज द इश्यू ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी विद ईरान उसको हटा के फ्रॉम अ जेनेटिक रिसोर्स एंगल ऑल दीज चीता शेयर देयर एंसेस्ट्रल लिंकेजेस टू द एफ्रीकन चीता That was one of the major re reasons to finally bring it. एक तो अच्छी बात थी that you had around seven thousand African cheetah, but barely fifty Asiatic cheetah. So one was that, but one of the reason was also this, and the countries from where you are getting. So it is if this is coming uh, through the CBD Convention on Biological Diversity, then this particular thing can happen smoothly. ये है इस क्वेश्चन का मतलब. But I know this is a more detailed, a very let's say in detail reading of this protocol. कि बायो पैरिसी का इन एंड आउट हर चीज ही पूछ ली है इसमें ठीक है ओके नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन आल्सो ओवरलैप्स विद द नॉलेज ऑफ इकोनॉमी यू रीड अबाउट ट्रिप्स यू रीड अबाउट आईपीआर सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ व्हाट डिड यू मार्क थ्री इज अच्छा व्हाट डिड यू एलिमिनेट अच्छा यू यू थॉट बॉन्ड से क्या सोचा अच्छा एक्चुअली बॉन्ड बहुत हैं जैसे आपने बोला ना देर इज अ बॉन्ड समिट बॉन्ड समिट इज कॉप ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ यू एन एफ ट्रिपल सी देर इज अ बॉन्ड कन्वेंशन विच इज नोन एज कन्वेंशन ऑन माइग्रेटरी स्पीशी तो इफ समथिंग इज हैपनिंग इन बॉन्ड वो ऐसा है तो एक्चुअली दीज बॉन्ड गाइडलाइंस आर ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू बायो पैरिसी दैट इज सेपरेट मेनी अ टाइम्स अ सेम समिट और डिफरेंट समिट्स कैन हैपन इन द सेम कंट्री बट दे आर नेम्ड बाय दैट कंट्री ओके सो यू कैन हैव अ बॉन्ड कन्वेंशन दैट इज सेपरेट COP 23 which happened in Bonn, वो अलग हो गई right? तो this also supports or takes up actions. Trips already does, Nagoya already does, and the International Covenant for Economic, Social and Cultural Aid this already does. Okay? So for question number ten, what is the answer? All. ठीक है? Now this should be a slightly easier question. ये बताओ. Okay? अब देखो, what is not exceed to question क्या है? okay what is in c2 yes these two right you can eliminate these three answer kya ho jayega only two acha aapne wo padha you mark three ni not x2 mein khud kaato likho pucha question mein in c2 that is easier to answer jab double negative ho na to usko positive karo khud se okay Question number twelve. Now this is again slightly based on your knowledge of geography, but if you followed the guidelines or things which I had shown, so abhi dekho question number twelve ko. What did you mark? Dekho pehla part to sahi hai, which we just saw. Okay. The Indian Indo-Malayan realm contains India's three biodiversity hotspots. This is also true, and Earth's largest realm extends into the geographical territory. What are they trying to ask? Palearctic, okay. So this is going to extend into some part of India. That is also true, okay. So here, all these is true, right? Now, in this, Indo-Malayan contains three. Which one? Three. Huh? Right. All the three, right? All these three are going to be there in Indo-Malayan. Which one is not there? The Himalayan part, or not? How? जो थ्री विच आर देयर इन इंडो मलायन कौन से होंगे तीन हाँ हिमालयन इज पेल आर्कटिक अदर थ्री आर देयर इन इंडो मलायन इंडो मलायन कंटेन सुंडा बोर्नियो जावा ऑल ऑफ दैट पार्ट इनफैक्ट इफ यू रिमेंबर इंडो मलायन से मुझे याद आता है ट्वेंटी सेवनटीन में क्वेश्चन आया था यूपीएससी मेन्स में डी कोलोनाइजेशन ऑफ मलय पेनसुला याद है किसी को सो दैट वॉज अ क्वेश्चन विच वॉज आस्ट इन वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री एंड पोज दैट वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री गॉट ऑलमोस्ट एक्सटिंक्ट Talking of species getting extinct, so there are also topics which are getting extinct. So, उससे ये आये because it was Malay Peninsula. So here this whole region, Borneo, Java, Sumatra, Southeast Asia, pure Mekong Delta etc. All of that is this whole region. Okay. So ये है this is slightly factual, but yes, this region contains these three hotspots. ठीक है. Moving on. Question number thirteen. Which is not found between 15 degree north to 30 degree north. कौन सा नहीं मिलता है? Okay. Anybody else who attempted this question? आ वो हाँ क्या किया? Answer क्या किया? चलो ये देखते हैं. 
through this you can easily answer till this part what would you have the 30 is roughly here right so one second kaha gaya ha tropical dry mil jayega tropical humid mil jayega can you find alpine meadows alpine meadows somebody shayad milega sorry theek hai no of course ha sorry aap kuch keh rahe the ha ha वहां भी मिल सकता है और यहां भी तो मिल ही रहा है ऊपर वाले पार्ट पे सो वॉट आर यू नॉट गेटिंग टेम्परेट ग्लास नॉट गेटिंग दैट इज नॉट हियर फाइन सो दिस इज आई थिंक आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव गॉटन दिस रॉन्ग गुड अच्छा नहीं वहां अच्छा मुझे लगा उन्हें पीछे सबने कहा उनका सही अच्छा ओके ओके आई एम सॉरी आई एम सॉरी तो इस पर थोड़ा सा आई एल प्रेटेंट टू मेक अ वेरी सैड फेस कि चलो भी सबका गलत हुआ है ओके okay. नो नो बट सी यहां पे यू माइट नॉट बी आस्ट अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक बट अगेन दिस विल हेल्प यू रिमेंबर थोड़ा सा मैप और एरिया राइट इनफैक्ट हर पॉइंट इज ऑल्सो गुड कि माउंटेन वाले में यू कैन ऑल्सो फाइंड इट इन अदर पार्ट विच आर एट हायर ऑल्टीट्यूड दैट इज ऑल्सो फेयर पॉइंट गुड आइडिया हाँ हाइएस्ट नंबर ऑफ स्पीशीज क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन बाकी लोगों ने क्या माना आंसर आंसर इसका डी है ईस्ट हिमालयन पार्ट ऑफ द इंडियन हिमालयन रीजन Overall has the highest number of species in Schedule One. Okay. Sorry, ha. Huh, this is also one of the hot spot, right? Now, in this, a term is written: confluence of Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. What is that known as? Nilgiris. And in that, there is a protected area at the confluence of this. Has been asked twice by UPSC. Chalo, hint. Deta hu. S se start hota hai. हाँ मैं बोलने वाला था इट इज रिलेटेड टू ट्रूथ सत्य मंगलम ओके सो इट इज सत्य मंगलम सो सत्य मंगलम टाइगर रिजर्व और लेट्स से द नीलगिरी इज समथिंग यू शुड नो ओके यू हैव टू टॉक अबाउट अ फाउना इट इज फाउंड इन ट्रांस हिमालयन रीजन इट्स अ मेजर प्रे ऑफ स्नो लेपर्ड ब्लू गोट से शायद किसी को आइडिया लगा इससे अच्छा वॉट डिड यू मार्क अगर कराए तो नहीं किया अच्छा एनी बडी एल्स हंगोल किसी ने भराल मार्क किया भराल इज दिस ब्लू कोट शीप तो इट इज देर इन अ लॉट ऑफ योर बुक्स ऑल्सो हंगुल जिसने भी मार्क किया ठीक है हंगुल के बारे में वॉट यू नो अबाउट हंगुल वी ऑलरेडी नो पार्ट ऑफ स्पीशी रिकवरी प्रोग्राम दचिगम में मिलता है मेजरली बट इट इज ऑल्सो फाउंड इन क्या इट इज रेडिया एंड इट इज ऑल्सो फाउंड इन ओवेरा अरु वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी ऑल्सो इन कश्मीर you have siberian ibex so here the answer is bharal it is this blue coat kind of a sheep which is a major prey for the snow leopard and it is found in the trans himalayan region okay question number 15 with reference to the western ghats let us see some points it originated in the rupture of ancient Gond gondwana land number 1 question number 16 mein true or false okay Influence of this is the best or best examples of tropical monsoon on the planet. Here, though, this is true. Think about the south western monsoon entering, etc. So, this is true. Karnataka has the highest number of protected sites in Western Ghats under UNESCO World Heritage Site. A any guesses? Many people are saying Kerala. Answer is actually Kerala. So, in this, you have the maximum protected sites in Kerala. You already know the six states which are there. इट हैज वेट एवरग्रीन सेमी एवर ग्रीन एंड येस माउंटेन ग्रासलैंड भी मिलते हैं यहां पर वॉट आर माउंटेन ग्रासलैंड वॉट इज द नेम फॉर दिस वॉट इज ठीक है तो दिस इज ऑल्सो वन थिंग यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड यू ओके यस आई थिंक मेनी पीपल आर आंसरिंग इट येस ओके ओके सो यू हैव द स्टेट ऑल्सो Western Ghats is important. Acha, how many natural UNESCO World Heritage sites do we have in India? Natural. Hmm, there are seven. ठीक है. How many cultural do you have? By the way, some new additions have happened. Cultural में कौन-कौन से हैं? कितने हैं? Approx. What are the new additions? हुए साला. चलो अभी शायद नहीं पढ़ा भी गार्डन कल्चर में. There have been certain new additions also in cultural, not in natural. Natural में there are only seven. Is Western Ghats a part of natural? 
वर्ड हेरिटेज साइट इट इज इट इज इट इज ये है वेस्टर्न गार्ड वैसे भी इंपॉर्टेंट सो इट्स बोथ अ बायोडाइवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट ऑल्सो इट्स ऑल्सो अ यूनेस्को वर्ड हेरिटेज साइट वर्ड हेरिटेज साइट आर थ्री बेसिकली नेचुरल कल्चरल एंड मिक्सड मिक्सड में यस वी हैव ओनली वन विच इज यस यस कंचनजंगा सिक्किम चलो ये ट्राई करो ये दिस क्वेश्चन आई थिंक कैन बी आंसर्ड थ्रू सर्टन एलिमिनेशन इन हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेट ट्रॉपिकल एवरग्रीन और ट्रॉपिकल सेमी एवरग्रीन आर फाउंड ओके छत्तीसगढ़ में मिलेगा मध्य प्रदेश में मिलेगा सिक्किम पक्का मिलेगा सिक्किम में यू विल फाइंड माउंटेन फॉरेस्ट ओके बट इन सम पार्ट ऑफ बिहार और एटलीस्ट इन लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ बिहार यूल फाइंड इट हाँ वाल्मीकि टाइगर रिजर्व यस बाय द वे दैट्स द ओनली टाइगर रिजर्व ऑफ बिहार वाल्मीकि तो यहां पे आंसर आपने क्या मारा था ओनली वन अच्छा आपने अच्छा यू मार्क बोथ अच्छा ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम बट ठीक है यू यू गाइस आर स्टिल थिंकिंग इफ यू आर थिंकिंग एंड गेटिंग इन रॉन्ड नो इश्यूज योर एक्यूरेसी विल इंप्रूव नो डाउट अबाउट इट ओके दिस वन ओनली वन इसका ओनली बिहार इज द राइट आंसर In Sikkim, if you can see the map also, you will find mountain forest in Sikkim. And yes, we have done more of. Chalo, ha, good. Darakshan, yes, Shanti Niketan is there. Ria, you are also right. Shanti Niketan is also one of the new entries to the UNESCO sites. Please do read about it. Okay. Now we are talking of medicinal plants and their uses. Question number eighteen. So you have Sarb Gandha, which is for blood pressure. This is true. now jamun if you know people want to eat blueberries which is very expensive it is always better to have jamun jamun is helping in sugar okay so it is not there for asthma it is there for sugar theek okay? hai so it is anti diabetic in that sense and then babul earache it is actually arjun so arjun jo tree hai usse you use or let's say medicinal plant which is used for treating ear ache not babul okay but here just remember jamun more important for us to know has a lot of nutrients antioxidants theek hai so this is just related to the topic we just discussed medicinal plants and their uses okay to so question number 18 may be i think we only have one answer it is a which is correct now i think this you can answer pehla kyun galat hai yes deccan plateau wrong third sahi hai galat hai स्टेटमेंट नंबर थ्री वाई वुड सॉरी यस जीरो फाइटिक आर डेजर्ट इट इज नॉट देर इन डेकन पेनिसुला ओके सो दिस इज रॉन्ग प्लांट्स फाउंड इन डेकन पेन सो इट शुड हैव बीन प्लांट्स फाउंड इन थर्ड डेजर्ट ये डेजर्ट आर जीरो फाइटिक ये रॉन्ग हो गया सेकेंड क्वेश्चन पॉइंट इज क्वेश्चन नाइनटीन द रान ऑफ कच इज द ओनली लार्ज फ्लडेड grassland zone in the indo malayan region batao this is actually correct okay the ran of kutch is the only large flooded grassland zone in the indo malayan region okay which one ran of kutch nahi yahan pe to bahut uh, salt water ingress hota hai ran of kutch mein bhi hai aur by the way ran of kutch to is sal you had a question on this also 2023. अच्छा ओके ओके आई सी तो देर कैन बी कंफ्यूजन यर बट ओवरऑल इस पूरे रीजन में इट इज द ओनली लार्ज फ्रेड ग्लास स्टैंड दैट इज ट्रू वन सेकेंड रुक जाओ वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड हम्म इज इट ऐसा है okay if that is there i'll just have a look at once acha riyan in such questions uh, we are asking about a certain property so jamun is actually very famous for sugar wala part okay controlling sugar so i think in jamun bp wala part is not asked it is asked for sarp gandha okay so that is there but yes 
some of these questions can be answered by knowing some of the properties i know this will be difficult to answer in the exam hall ki if you have to be very sure ki kya kisi ki exact famous property hai okay but this is for us to just test you overall ki kuch kuch cheeze aap yaad kar lo now we have not seen direct such questions but maybe some of the attributes kisi aur sense mein kisi aur statement mein wo pooch sakte hain theek hai hmm ye to this is fairly easy batao isme ek cheez to suni hogi वेस इको लोकेशन सुना होगा एंड दिस ऑल्सो वॉज देयर इट वॉज ग्रांटेड द नॉन ह्यूमन पर्सन स्टेटस बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया नॉन लिविंग एंटिटी के साथ भी एंड बाय द वे दिस इज अ बिग रिकोगशन ओके सो दिस एंड दिस गिव द आंसर द नेशनल अक्वेटिक एनिमल ऑफ इंडिया दिस इज अ कंजर्वेशन एरिया फॉर दिस इन बिहार वेयर इज इट इन विक्रमशिला ठीक है so that is there other than that for dolphin you have to read about the global declaration on dolphins kal maine bola tha theek hai ek bar wo padho that is related to the six fresh water dolphins usme se bhi panch dolphins hai one of them is porpoise but they have added it ha true one is critically endangered right ha 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 wo bhi hai wo bhi right right but do read about it that is there so here eco location why because they are essentially blind they are known as susu because because of the uh, sound they produce they have to again come up to breathe etc that is their eco location you are sending in beams of sound it is going to strike back then you can no so they are essentially blind that is something you have to remember okay okay moving forward ha this is a good conceptual question rising co2 levels rising levels of co2 will drive an increase in plant photosynthesis true and this phenomena is known as carbon fertilization isko likho alag se this phenomena of rising levels is known as carbon fertilization this was already asked once by upsc what is carbon fertilization so generally you read only the negatives about increase of co2 because co2 is a greenhouse gas also it is present naturally as well but this will lead to increase in the temperatures and one of the significant contributors of global warming so first part is correct now let us read statement number 2 rising levels of co2 in the atmosphere will lead to lesser water consumption by plants during photosynthesis pehle isko socho this is a purely conceptual statement think about it hmm false but why agar false hai to kyun theek hai theek hai isme dekho point is let us understand you have leaves leaves have stomata stomata will open to get co2 एंड उसमें एक चीज हमेशा है कि यू विल ऑल्सो लूज वॉटर एज अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस बट इफ द सीओ टू इज अबंडेंट जनरली वॉट हैपन्स द स्टोमेटा हैज टू बी ओपन फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम ओके ना इफ स्टोमेटा इज ओपन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम डोंट यू थिंक वील लूज मोर वॉटर जनरली स्पीकिंग दैट इज वॉट ट्रांसपेरेशन लॉस ये तो लॉस है ना बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू टेक सीओ टू फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फियर स्टोमेटा इज ओपन बट एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट यू विल लूज सम वॉटर ट्रांसपेरेशन लॉस Now, because the CO2 is very much abundant, बहुत अच्छा levels पे है This is widely documented. Daily stomatas will open for a very short time. सिर्फ थोड़ी सी देर के लिए stomata खुलेगा So over a period of time, this will lead to better water efficiency and overall minimization of water loss. That is why I said this is conceptual carbon fertilization. They have already asked you. This question is just an extension, or this statement is just an extension of this law logic. because stomata ki opening and closing we should understand what is actually happening in the opening and closing of stomata okay that when you so there is always a trade off just like your uh, insectivorous plant always have to make a trade off there is also a question like of uh, that sort between the traps and between the photosynthesis of the leaves okay so this part i hope you are able to understand third in case of rising co2 etc nitrogen will be an important limiting factor in the growth of plants this is true it is an important limiting factor nitrogen is very much important we already know nitrates etc are being required kal humne dekha hai answer iska kya ho gaya 
ऑल द थ्री स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट बट प्लीज रिमेम्बर दे इज अ टर्म कार्बन फर्टिलाइजेशन दो और टर्म आप पढ़ोगे आगे सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन में वन इज ओशियन फर्टिलाइजेशन वन इज आयरन फर्टिलाइजेशन दैट इज सेपरेट फ्रॉम कार्बन फर्टिलाइजेशन प्लीज नोट एक से आप कुछ बोल रहे थे सॉरी एक सुना रहा हूं मैं आपको हाँ आपने कुछ बोला अभी अच्छा एंड वन इज आयरन फर्टिलाइजेशन बाय द वे दोनों चीजों से होता क्या है यू हेल्प इन स्टिमुलेटिंग द प्लांट सॉरी फाइटो प्लांटॉन की ग्रोथ बढ़ाते हो दे टेक अप मोर सीओ टू एंड दैट हेल्प इन सीक्वेस्टरिंग आयरन फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड कार्बन सॉरी आयरन एंड ओशन फर्टिलाइजेशन इज अ मैकेनिज्म और अ मेथड ऑफ कार्बन सीक्वेस्ट्रेशन ठीक है वेयर एज दिस इज सेपरेट अब आप बोलाओ आप बताओ हाँ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर मतलब ओवरऑल न्यूट्रिशन के लिए फॉर द प्लांट ग्रोथ वी डू नीड नाइट्रेट्स वो हमें चाहिए सीओ टू बहुत ज्यादा अबंडेंट है तो ग्लूकोज और फूड अवेलेबिलिटी ज्यादा होगी बट उसके साथ अपार्ट फ्रॉम फूड यू ऑल्सो नीड न्यूट्रिय सो इट शुड बी बैलेंस्ड बाय द नाइट्रोजन अवेलेबिलिटी ठीक है हाँ राइट ओके नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर 22 प्राइमरी प्रोडक्शन कैन अकर थ्रू द प्रोसेस ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस और कीमोसिंथेसिस बताओ हम्म बोथ आर ट्रू ठीक है सेकेंड नेट प्राइमरी प्रोडक्टिविटी एस्टिमेशन आई थिंक नाउ द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस लिमिटिंग फैक्टर रिया इज क्लियर अदर स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो वॉट एवर आई थिंक जो भी अब तक डाउट लिखे हैं आई बीन टेकिंग दम आई होप दो पार्ट आर क्लियर हाँ क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी टू पे आते हैं ट्वेंटी टू में हाँ प्राइमरी प्रोडक्शन कैन अकर दिस इज ट्रू दोनों तरह से दिस कैन हैपन ओके सेकेंड इज नेट प्राइमरी प्रोडक्टिविटी विटी इज वॉट पर यूनिट एरिया पर यूनिट टाइम वी हैव सीन ग्रॉस नेट एक्सेट्रा एक्स इट इंक्लूड्स ओनली द अब ग्राउंड बायोमास एक्सक्लूडिंग द रूट्स This is also true. This is in the basic definition also that it includes सिर्फ above ground biomass. That is why above ground बायोमास दैट इज बाई अब ग्राउंड वाली चीज फॉरेस्ट रिपोर्ट में भी बहुत जगह दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी इज यूज हाँ हाँ राइट हाँ हाँ अच्छा वाई दे आर डेट्री वोर वाले में बट डेट्री वोर डायरेक्टली विल नॉट बी प्रोड्यूसिंग फूड डायरेक्टली हम प्राइमरी प्रोडक्टिविटी की बात कर रहे हैं है ना तो और उसमें भी प्राइमरी प्रोडक्टिविटी में वी मेंशन और प्लांट्स तो इसलिए हाँ या जो अंडरग्राउंड हैं जिनके अंडरग्राउंड रूट्स हैं ओके मे बी देन वी हैव टू सी अबाउट हाउ द फोटोसिंथेसिस ओवरऑल इज हैपनिंग बट ओवरऑल दिस इज हाउ लेट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंप्यूटेशन कैलकुलेशन में वी ओनली टेक द अब ग्राउंड बायोमास ठीक है इफ यू आर मैंशनिंग अबाउट समथिंग विच इज ग्रोन अंडरग्राउंड जो पूरी तरह से अंडरग्राउंड होती है फेयर फेयर पॉइंट हाँ रैबिट इज अगेन सेकेंडरी हो जाएगा वो जो आप बता रहे हो देखो हाँ 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 सेकेंडरी में आ जाएगा ना सेकेंडरी में आई थिंक दैट कैन कम वी आर टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट द प्लांट वाला पार्ट प्राइमरी प्रोडक्टिविटी इज अबाउट द प्लांट्स हाँ किसमें उसमें रूट का रेस्पिरेशन आ जाएगा यस 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 बट आई थिंक ये वाला पार्ट स्पेशली फॉर द अंडरग्राउंड आई जस्ट हैव अ लुक हाँ बोलो राइट 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 हाँ राइट बट इसमें भी वन क्वेश्चन इज देर बिकॉज वेन वी आर ऑलरेडी सींग दिस कैन ऑल्सो हैपन थ्रू कीमो सिंथिस एंड इफ आई टेक एन एक्सेप्शनल कोई और सकेस विच इज वाई एम ऑल्सो कंसिडरिंग इज डाउट कि वॉट इफ समथिंग इज इन साइड दे इज अ केमिकल रिएक्शन फूड इज बींग स्टोर्ड किसी तरह से हो रहा है कोई बल्ब बेस्ड हो जैसे अनियन टाइप के जो भी बल्ब वाले प्रोडक्ट्स हैं प्रोडक्ट नहीं चलो आई शुड यूज अनदर टर्म सो बेस्ड ऑन दैट मे बी मे बी सो आई एम आई विल एक्सप्लोर ये तो दिस इज अ फेयर डाउट आई थिंक आई कैन लुक अप इट मैं देख सकता हूँ इसको ठीक है आई लव अ लुक क्वेश्चन हाँ क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू ओके ठीक है Generally, the warm and wet climate regions are have, having the greatest amount of biomass production. That is true. It is these regions which has the highest biomass production. ठीक है? Now this is a good point question. Carnivorous plant, which is insectivorous plants, they cannot manufacture food through photosynthesis. False. अभी देखा? 
majority of these are likely to be found in bogs kal suna hai bogs blanket bogs ye bhi acha hai yaad aise rehta hai ki sir first option tha kuch to tha par tha first option you were right first option is that was blanket bogs you also had ferns and swamps and so on and so forth to ye jo bogs hai or fens hai that is yes this is true these places generally have lesser temperatures okay but they will have more rainfall which we saw yesterday right ab ye jo it, itni lambi jo definition likhi hai third mein plants that may opportunistically utilize your nutrients from dead animals without specifically seeking capturing are not considered carnivorous plant this is true but here i'll tell you for a plant to be considered carnivorous okay you have to again give an exam you have to find there have to be five traits okay which are they have to capture the prey in the traps number one you have to kill the capture prey you have to digest it you have to absorb nutrients etc and use it to develop you have to have these traits ha huh. and based on this there has to be an adaptation which has to be there isiliye if a plant is opportunistically opportunistically utilizing the nutrients and without aap seek bhi nahi kar rahe the aapne capture bhi nahi kiya okay they are excluded from the definition of carnivorous तो यहां पे देर आर सर्टेन प्लांट जिसमें से ये चीज हो सकती है दैट दे आर एबल टू यूटिलाइज द न्यूट्रिय फ्रॉम अ डेड प्लांट बट आई विल स्टिल नॉट कॉल इट एन इंसेक्टिव वर्स प्लांट बिकॉज इंसेक्टिव वर्स प्लांट विल हैव टू फुलफिल दीज ट्रेट्स कैप्चर किल डाइजेस्ट अब्सॉर्ब एंड यूज ओके एंड बाय द वे दिस इज ऑल्सो मैंशन इन योर एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑल्सो फॉर क्वेश्चन सो यू कैन अगेन हैव अलो क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी थ्री आई थिंक वी ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन दिस पार्ट टू यू बट दिस इज अ वेरी फाइन लेवल डिटेल बट इट शुड बी useful in any case theek hai moving on question number 24 high light environments allow for a ye jo main bata raha tha trade off between photosynthetic leaves number 1 and photosynthetically inefficient prey capturing traps do cheeze hain leaves are already there and traps are also there so they have to make a trade off whether they want to go for photosynthetic ab leaves mein they can go for good photosynthesis because that is where the food comes in ultimately what are traps they are just supplements so even if the traps these are less photo they are less efficient they do not maybe are they, they do not are able to capture less sunlight even that will work so this is a adaptation aur yahi isme samjhaya gaya hai that they invest in these traps they will capture them and prey them so that ye you have better photosynthesis in leaves so there is a proper trade off that happens so here both of the statements are correct and the second statement is actually explaining what the first statement seeks to do theek hai they are doing this so that they can compensate for this efficiency by increasing more of this photosynthesis बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली दे वुड ऑलवेज वॉन्ट मोर फोटो सिंथिस वहीं से फूड आएगा सप्लीमेंट या कुछ न्यूट्रिय मिलेंगे हमें इंसेक्ट इफ दे वॉन्ट टू टेक अप एंड ईड इंसेक्ट ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर द आंसर इज ए प्रोसेपिस चिलेंसिस सुना है किसी ने करंट अफेयर में नहीं सुना है तो आई जस्ट टेल यू द करंट अफेयर वाई दिस वॉज ए न्यूज ट्रिपल ट्रबल फॉर गल्फ ऑफ मन्नार येस्टडे वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट गल्फ ऑफ मन्नार एंड ड्यूगॉन कंजर्वेशन रिजर्व now this gulf of mannar is being threatened by prosopis chilensis the moment you see prosopis we already have done juliflora it would be an invasive species so this is yes this is an invasive species number 1 and this is actually a type of tree known for drought resistant properties prosopis chilensis okay so this is also known as chilean mesquite so this is a legume tree number 1 second arid semi arid conditions and of course it will not be native to india i can create a trap these are native to india kaise nahi honge na these are invasive species so they are from abc countries abc countries are famous for lithium triangle theek hai argentina bolivia chile peru so wahan se aa raha hai drought resistant hai it is causing a problem so this is the main reason why we asked you this theek hai there is also a similar question we asked you based on a certain I think species. वो भी बहुत interesting update है I think that is question number थर्टी is थ्री जीरो हाँ वो भी बहुत interesting है Now this you can easily solve. ये देखते हैं इसमें we have I think this most of the people can solve this. Statement टू देखो भाई 
सम स्पीशीज कैन बी नॉन लिविंग दिस इज फॉल्स सम नॉन नेटिव कैन बी नॉन इन्वेजिव हाँ वैसे ही है सम नॉन नेटिव स्पीशीज कैन बी नॉट इन्वेजिव दिस कैन हैपन सम इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज कैन चेल सॉइल केमिस्ट्री यस सम इन्वेजिव कैन मॉडिफाई द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ वाइल्ड फायर यस ये सब कुछ हो सकता है बट दे हैव टू बी लिविंग हाउ वी डिफाइन एन इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज दैट दीज आर लिविंग स्पीशीज तो दिस बिकम्स रॉन्ग सो हियर हाउ मेनी स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी सिक्स राइट आशु हियर सम इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज कैन बी नॉन लिविंग इज रॉन्ग ओके फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स देर फोर द आंसर इज सी हाउ मेनी स्टेटमेंट हेयर आर करेक्ट ओके मूविंग ऑन आई थिंक दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज आंसर्ड बाई समी इन द क्लास ये ऑल्सो अ वाइल्ड फायर ऑल्टरिंग इन आई थिंक आपने बोला था ना ये इस रिलेटेड इसका आंसर क्या होगा ये सो वाइल्ड फायर ऑल्टरिंग इन्वेजिव स्पीशी विच कैन थ्रेटेन अ सर्टन बायोम इज सवाना वाई सवाना इट्स अ ग्रास लैंड यस इन फैक्ट वाइल्ड फायर ऑल्टरिंग ये देखो ये स्टेटमेंट सम इन्वेसिव कैन मॉडिफाई द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ वाइल्ड फायर सो इफ इट हैपन्स टू बी इन सवाना सवाना एज अ बायोम और एज अ ग्रास लैंड विल बी अंडर थ्रेट ओके क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी सेवन द आंसर इज डी ओके ये बताओ बाक क्लोरोफिल कैम्बियम एंड रूट्स वील स्टार्ट विद रूट्स दे फॉर्म अ सिम्बायोटिक एसोसिएशन विद माइक्रोराइजल फंगस दिस वी ऑलरेडी सीन वॉट इज राइजोबियम राइजोबियम इज अ बैक्टीरिया वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू नो ठीक है कैम्बियम इंक्रीजेस द ट्री थिकनेस वी जस्ट सॉ क्लोरोफिल यस दिस इज ट्रू क्लोरोफिल का भी ट्रू है प्रोड्यूस इन लेसर क्वांटिटी एज द लाइट की लेंथ इंक्रीजेस यस ट्रू एंड बार्क मेड ऑफ डेड टिश्यूज वी ऑलरेडी नो सो हियर द आंसर इज ऑल फोर ओके सॉरी हा नहीं नॉट नेसेसरली अवेलेबिलिटी एक वैसे ना फोटो पीरियोडिज्म ओवरऑल हाउ मच अवेलेबल इज द सनलाइट तो उस पर होगा बट हेयर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द लेंथ ऑफ द नाइट इंक्रीजिंग सो ओवरऑल वील सी द क्लोरोफिल इज प्रोड्यूस इन लेसर क्वांटिटी जस्ट बिकॉज सन विल बी देयर फॉर लेसर नंबर ऑफ आवर्स ओवरऑल हाँ सॉरी अच्छा ओके 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 इन अ बाक वाली बात सही है बट आई थिंक दे शुड स्पेसिफाइड आउट ऑफ बाक ओके तो दिस कैन आई आई कैन अग्री विद यू ऑन दिस क्योंकि जस्ट द मोमेंट यू गो वन लेयर इन साइड वहां पर लिविंग पार्ट आ सकता है बट द मोस्ट आउटर पार्ट या फिर पूरी तरह से आउटर होता देन वी कैन थिंक अबाउट डेड टिश्यूज नहीं 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 वो वो तो मैं मान रहा हूं अगर इनर बाक आप जैसे भी आउटर से जैसे अंदर आओगे लिविंग टिश्यूज विल स्टार्ट Here I think यह तो वी कुड इवन स्पेसिफाइड दिस एज आउट ऑफ बार्क टू मेक इट इवन वेरी क्लियर कि बाहर का है बट जनरली इन मेनी केसेज यूल फाइंड बार्क को जो वेन दे राइट इट दे मैंशन आउट ऑफ बार्क ओके बट लेट से अब ये जो स्टूडेंट्स बायो का जिसका हल्का सा बैकग्राउंड है दे विल गो इन टू वेरी फाइन डिटेल्स बट स्टिल फाइंड आउट ओके आई अग्री वी वी हैव डन दिस हो गया ट्वेंटी नाइन पे आओ सम पैरासिटिक प्लांट्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द बेनिफिट ऑफ द होस्ट This cannot happen. अगर ऐसा होगा तो हम we have to change our definitions, right? So this is wrong. Okay, so this would be wrong. Second, some parasitic plants cannot complete the life cycle without the host. This is true. There is a phenomenon known as obligate parasitism. Okay, so if you read about obligate parasitism, it is what happens. यही होता है इसमें. If you are interested, just read it. एक दो example देखना है इसके लिए But again, we will not go into too much of detail here. Some parasitic plants are a tourist attraction in their native habitat. True. And if you see your model answers, we mentioned a particular flower. Okay. Rafflesia. What is that? Why is it famous? Largest flower happens to be a parasite, but it is also a major tourist attraction. Rafflesia, right? So this is there. हाँ 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 करेक्ट 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 नेक्स्ट आते हैं ये बताओ ये किसी ने सुना है अजीब सा नाम ओके 
आई कैन नॉट इवन प्रोनाउंस इट सो आई प्रिटेंड टू से ठीक है समटाइम सीन दिन न्यूज बेस्ट डिस्क्राइब्स ठीक है वॉट इज दिस सो दिस एक्चुअली इट इज यू शुड डेफिनेटली नो इट एंड वेन आई शो यू वाई दिस वॉज देयर दिस इज द वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट केस देखो कोलकाता मैन कैचेज अ पोटेंशियली डेडली प्लांट डिजीज फर्स्ट सच केस इन द वर्ल्ड इंडिया में भी नहीं है ठीक है दैट इज वाई वी हैव इंक्लूडेड दिस स्पेसिफिकली वॉट इज दिस एंड बाय द वे इसमें बहुत लंबा प्रोसीजर हुआ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ही हैड द इश्यूज ऑफ कफिंग एक्सेट्रा ही वेंट कोई भी जो बेसिक मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट में दे वर नॉट एबल टू कैच इट फाइनली डब्ल्यू एच ओ के जो होल सिस्टम उसमें भी फंगस से मैच करके फाइनली पता चला दैट इट इज दिस फंगस सो इट इज कॉन्ड्रोस्ट्रेयम पुरम परम परम जो भी है ठीक है सो वॉट एवर इज देयर सो दिस इज वॉट दिस इज अ पोटेंशियली डेडली दिस डिजीज सो दिस इज अ प्लांट फंगस दैट इज वॉट यूल रिमेंबर कॉज इज सिल्वर लीव डिजीज ओके फाउंड इन टेम्परेट रीजन बट अगेन ये अब आपको याद रहेगा बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉन्टेक्स एंड द स्टोरी बिहाइंड दिस दिस इज अ सॉरी दिस इज अ प्लांट डिजीज बट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द वर्ल्ड अ ह्यूमन हैज बीन इन्फेक्टेड बाई इट so this is actually why we have asked you otherwise there are a lot of parasites there are a lot of things not that important but this is something you should keep in mind okay this is often fatal yes and can also be spread by airborne spores etc temperate northern southern hai ye kolkata mein hua and this person aise randomly nahi hua he was a mycol uh, sorry mycologist means he was working on the fungus species in general okay so what is the answer here 30 ab अब तो समझ गए थर्टी का आंसर इज ए ओके दिस डेजर्टिफिकेशन आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स यू ऑलरेडी नो इट इज नॉट एन अब्रप्ट कन्वर्जन इट इज अ ग्रेजुअल कन्वर्जन इट टेक्स ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ऑफ लैंड इनटू सेमी एरियड एक्सेट्रा पॉवर्टी इन पॉलिटिकल इनस्टेबिलिटी कैन लीड यस दे कैन श्योरली इंडिया होस्टेड ये मैंने कल बताया था याद है इंडिया होस्टेड इन 14 COP New Delhi Declaration, which led to Peace Forest Initiative, one of led by South Korea, etc. Uh, right now we had 15 COP in Cote d'Ivoire, Abidjan in Africa. Okay. So this is also true. Land degradation will influence energy balance. This is also true. So what should be the answer in 30, 31? Yes, only three. Cold spots. Ye kisne attempt kiya question? and what did you mark b d acha how many of you mark d correct pucha hai acha kis kis ne a mark kiya hai you have been trapped padhte hain biodiversity hot spots the ab aapko answer pata chal gaya theek that this is actually the definition jo yahan likhi hai it is the definition of hot spots regions that contain high level of species diversity many endemic species and a significant number of threatened or endangered species this is what we read do it main cheeze hain high biodiversity and level of threaten should be high right so biodiversity cold spots are the opposite they will have very limited biodiversity they will not have high levels so here what has pehle statement kya hai hot spots galat hua second statement padhte hain biodiversity called cold spot lose more species pehli baat if they do not have enough species and if they do not have enough interference of people how would they lose more so yahan pe this should be here and this should be here right so it is the biodiversity cold spots which lose less species hot spots lose more species and lose them faster kyunki second attribute is being threatened 70% or more is threatened in biodiversity hot spots so in question number 32 both the statements are wrong you agree okay neel kurunji अब देखो अगर आपको नहीं पता था तो वी ऑल्सो कवर प्लांट्स अंडर द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट इनिशियली वन द एक्ट एट सिक्स शेड्यूल्स इट वाज़ द शेड्यूल सिक्स व्हिच वाज़ रिलेटेड टू प्लांट्स एज ऑफ नाउ द शेड्यूल थ्री इज रिलेटेड टू प्लांट्स ठीक है कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन इट इज अ श्रब इन शोला बिल्कुल सही है वेस्टर्न घाट्स इराविकुलम इन केरला दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू एंड दिस वंस ब्लूम इन ट्वेल्व ईयर्स पॉलिनेशन पॉलिनेशन हैपन्स बिकॉज ऑफ bees chalo let me tell you something interesting a recent plant was in news because of self pollination padhna iske bare mein and this is broke bre breaking all the science ki jo theories hain hmm padhna padhna 
जस्ट रीड अबाउट इट सो लाइक दैट इज हाउ यूल थिंक अच्छा इन नॉर्मल केसेज यू वुड वॉन्ट पॉलिनेशन और यू विल हैव इट थ्रू इनसेक्ट बीज एक्सेट्रा बट देर इज अ प्लांट विच इज ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन करंट करंट अफेयर एक्सेट्रा जस्ट रीड अबाउट इट आप गूगल करोगे आपको मिल जाएगा ओके अ प्लांट इन द न्यूज बिकॉज ऑफ सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन ओके हॉलो हॉक टूल इज वेल नोन फॉर and for the online students also this thing remains valid you also please read about a self pollinating plant which was in news hmm ha pansy yeah yeah correct because i remember it because i had covered this in my prelims crash course hollow hawk tool 34 ha bolo no no it is going to be a most deviant Not followed, not seen. और ये जो मिला है इट इज बींग अंडरस्टूड और बींग सीन की ये ऐसा हुआ हुआ ये तो आउटलायर हो जाएगा ना दिस इज नॉट अ जनरल ट्रेट विच वी सी सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन विल नॉट बी अ जनरल ट्रेट हा है ना जैसे कि गिव मी एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ सेल्फ पॉलिनेटिंग बट बाय अ वेक्टर कहीं पे कुछ होगा ना तो वहां पे इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस द वन विच आई एम टेलिंग यू वेक्टर एक्सेट्रा वॉज नॉट बींग यूज हाँ विदाउट वेक्टर सो दैट मेक्स इट इवन मोर प्रोनाउंसड ठीक है एयर में भी स्पोर्ट्स आप कर सकते मूव कर सकते हो ट्रेवल कर सकते हो राइट राइट करेक्ट बट इन दिस केस इट्स अ स्पेसिफिक केस अगर चलो होगा तो वी कैन स्टार्ट टू मॉरस क्लास विद दैट एग्जाम्पल इट सेल्फ ठीक है आगे बढ़ते हैं हॉलो हॉक टूल इज वेल नोन फॉर अब देखो हुआ क्या था इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया अलॉट ऑफ वाइल्ड फायर्स वर कमिंग अलॉट ऑफ ट्रीज एक्सेट्रा वर गेटिंग डैमेज ओके सो अ पर्टिकुलर कंजर्वेशनिस्ट व्हाट ही डू ही डिड एक्चुअली वाज टू मेक होल्स व्हिच विल सर्व होम फॉर दीज एनिमल्स एंड बर्ड्स सो दिस वॉज अ मैनुअल काइंड ऑफ एन इंटरवेंशन जेनरली नेचुरल प्रोसेस में फ्रॉम फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स इट कैन टेक ओके but through this hollow hawk tool this can be done in a matter of months or maybe one or two, let's in very short span of time in a matter of months so this will help in creation of these homes otherwise if the wild fires have already led to destruction of these habitats to in animals or birds ka kya hoga so it is that tool which is being done making holes in the trees which will serve as home okay for these animals and birds this is question number 34 okay answer is b 34 yahan pe honey bee termite butterfly and ant the question is bio indicator okay so first is honey bee it will tell you about environmental chemical disruption that is true it has a lot of pheromones on its body through that it can tell you overall chemicals etc right so pehla cheez sahi hai it can tell about these chemical disruptions termites स सॉइल फर्टिलिटी से रिलेटेड होते हैं टर्माइट्स आर ऑल्सो नोन एज डेट्रीटी वोर ओके जस्ट लाइक अर्थ वॉर्म्स आर डेट्रीटी वोर्स टर्माइट्स आर ऑल्सो डेट्रीटी वोर्स बटरफ्लाई ऑल्सो टेल यू हैवी मेटल और ओवरऑल इन्वायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन द डेथ ऑफ बटरफ्लाई ओके टेल्स दैट एंड दैट इज वाई यू माइट हर्ड अबाउट समथिंग नोन एज बटरफ्लाई इफेक्ट वॉट वुड हैपन इफ द बटरफ्लाईज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड डाई है ना और जनरली स्पीकिंग इफ द इंसेक्ट पॉपुलेशन डाइज तो एक कॉन्सेप्ट एक और भी न्यूज में रहता है इकोलॉजिकल आर्मा गेडन ओके एंड बेस्ड ऑन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट अ पर्टिकुलर रीड टेल वॉज ऑल्सो नेम्ड उसका नाम था आर्मा गेडन रीड टेल आर्मा गेडन इज दिस होल डिसरप्टिव और डिस्टोपियन आइडिया वेर इन ड्रास्टिकली द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंसेक्ट विल डिक्लाइन एंड इफ इट डज ऑल दिस पॉलिनेशन जितनी भी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्टिविटीज है वो डिसरप्ट हो जाएंगी तो ये कॉन्सेप्ट है जनरल बेस्ड ऑन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट अ पर्टिकुलर डैमसल फ्लाई एक स्पीशी ऑफ एन इंसेक्ट दैट वाज नेम्ड एज आर्मा गेडन रीड टेल ओके मूविंग ऑन यू हैव आंट्स यस्टरडे व्हाट डिड व्हाट डिड वी डिस्कस अबाउट आंट्स फंगस फार्मर्स एंड दीज आर आल्सो इंडिकेटर्स ऑफ डिस्टर्ब बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड इको मैनेजमेंट राइट सो हियर ऑल द फोर स्टेटमेंट हैपन टू बी करेक्ट now this is a very interesting question corals and its relation to bay of bengal okay pehli baat question says that 
बी ऑफ बेंगाल इज नॉट मच कंड्यूसिव फॉर कोरल ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट एज इन द अदर पार्ट उसने चार ऑप्शन दिए हैं हाई सैलिनिटी हाई सेडिमेंटेशन हाई टर्बिडिटी इनमें से कौन सा रीजन है कोई क्वेश्चन इज वेरी लेट्स ए लेयर्ड आउट ऑफ दिस विच इज नॉट द रीजन बिहाइंड द स्कैरसिटी मतलब यू हैव टू नो वॉट आर द रीजन फॉर स्कैरसिटी एंड वॉट इज नॉट द रीजन फॉर स्कैरसिटी पर्टिकुलर इन बी ऑफ बेंगाल बिल्कुल वेरी गुड यू हैव बे ऑफ बेंगाल इट इज फीडिंग थ्रू ब्रह्मपुत्र फ्रॉम गंगा सो कॉन्स्टेंटली फ्रेश वॉटर इज गोइंग टू कम ओके इफ फ्रेश वॉटर इज गोइंग टू कम सैलिनिटी विल बी लेस तो पहली बात इस पॉइंट को तो सीधे हटा सकते हो या फिर दिस बिकम्स रॉन्ग बाकी चीजें देखते हैं इफ देर आर सो मेनी रिवर्स इट विल लीड टू हाई सेडिमेंटेशन दे विल बी हाई टर्बिडिटी ऑल्सो एंड द टेम्परेचर्स इन बे ऑफ बेंगाल आर जनरली हायर okay if sst or sea surface temperature is higher it becomes more conducive for tropical cyclones also fine so these three things will ensure ki coral nahi bane question kya puch raha hai kaun sa hai to ab batao what is the answer to 36 bas only one this is the reason <laughs> ab ye bhi hai dekho ek ek hota hai ye aur ek right so here Which is not the reason. So these three are the reasons for the scarcity. Ye sahi hai tino. This is not the reason for the decline of scarcity. Ha sedimentation. Look, there are six major uh, conditions for formation of corals. One of them is temperature. One of them is also. No, no. Isme kya puch rahe hain? Scarcity jo ho rahi hai. ठीक है. We want slight bit of sediments. But agar halka sa bhi अल्टीमेटली क्या चाहिए अपने को पानी साफ होना चाहिए इफ देर इज टू मच ऑफ सेडिमेंट अल्टीमेटली लाइट कैन नॉट परकुलेट सो बोथ टर्बिडिटी एंड सेडिमेंटेशन टर्बिडिटी ज्यादा होगी अगेन लाइट कैन नॉट पेंट्रेट सेडिमेंट्स भी बहुत ज्यादा होंगे लाइट कैन नॉट पेंट्रेट वॉट वी वॉन्ट इज समिटी बट नॉट टू हाई सैलिनिटी सॉल्ट कॉन्टेंट होगा दैट ऑल्सो हेल्प इन ग्रोथ ऑफ कोरल रीव्स सो यू वॉन्ट सम ऑफ इट बट द पॉइंट इज द मोर सेडिमेंट्स इंक्रीज द मोर टर्बिडिटी इंक्रीज सबसे बड़ा इश्यू होगा the light not being able to do and again think of photic zone light getting interrupted so you would want sediment free water but i am not saying saline free water we want certain salinity theek hai that is there so ultimately if you are again please read about the conditions conducive for formation of coral reefs and again there have been new developments there are black corals also deep water coral also to so generally jo aap padhte ho wo basic corals hain but do naye corals jo aapko aur dekhna chahiye one is black corals and the deep sea corals which of that i think one question we had asked yesterday hard and soft to hai theek hai now this question how many of you attempted hmm you attempted it theek hai masai giraffes in africa have become endangered due to habitat fragmentation habitat fragmentation is true for every species okay the biggest loss of biodiversity happens because of habitat fragmentation so first part is true even if you do not know what are what is masai giraffe kya hai habitat fragmentation is going to be responsible for that right interbreeding enhances adaptability of population it can theek hai this will enhance adaptability q why different traits and over a period of time they can become more resilient overall adaptability badhegi third point third point with how when individuals so they migrate interbreed yes they break from the harmful gene combination that is why they do this migrate and interbreeding with small right so this question is actually related to what we discussed yesterday itself okay so this question i think can be asked so here how many statements are correct all three which pehli baar dekho dhyan se endemic to india nocturnal and critically endangered all the three criteria have to be fulfilled which of the following is endemic to india question number 38 okay what did you mark sorry only two acha ispe kaun sa hai pakka pata ek aur add kar lo jordans kar sir है और 
जॉर्डन कौन से मैंने बता दिया और होगा हंड्रेड परसेंट या इट इज देयर इट इज ऑल्सो देयर ठीक है ठीक है यस ऑल दो आप सही कह रहे हो वैसे देर इज ऑल्सो आपने सुना होगा कौंडाना रैट सुना है कौंडाना रैट इज ऑल्सो एंडेमिक आपको तो पता होना चाहिए आपको पढ़ाया था मैंने पिछली बार कौंडाना रैट इज फाउंड इन इज नॉट जस्ट फाउंड इट इज ओनली फाउंड इन सिंगल प्लेट्यू ऑफ पुणे महाराष्ट्र सिमिलरली देर इज इन एलवीरा रैट कौंडाना के ओ एन डी ए एन ए कौंडाना कौंडाना रैट एलवीरा रैट ये सारे क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड हैं ओके सो वट इज आंसर हियर All the four are first of all endemic. They are also nocturnal. So please note that this bird is nocturnal. Ha, huh, Jordan cursor is also. And for Jordan cursor, I am again repeating endemic to Andhra Pradesh, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, wildlife sanctuary. Me hi milta hai. Okay. Now. श्री लंका मलेश्वर वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी मीन्स डब्ल्यू एल एस रुक जाओ मैं लिख देता हूं यहां पे गोंडवाना नहीं है कोंडाना रैट इज ओनली फाउंड इन पुणे राइट एलवीरा रैट ओनली फाउंड इन Eastern Ghats and specifically Tamil Nadu. Elvira, E L V I R A, not E L V I S H. Singer Plateau, huh? Eastern Ghats, Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu. No, no, th this you please check. But these are. First of all, of course, endemic and critically endangered. At least for critically endangered, we can expect you to know. Okay, pygmy hawk. Suna hai? Mere suna hoga. World's smallest pig. Is it C R or E N? C R tha ek zamane mein. It is not C R anymore. Hmm. It is now endangered. In the older books that you will have, in that it might be mentioned. Okay, but the status of that has changed. Okay. The banyan tree पे आते हैं I think you are stored banyan या people पूछा था banyan पूछा था ना अब देखते हैं इस पर देखो Banyan can not produce seeds without fig insects. This is actually true. Okay, it cannot produce. That is why the role of fig insects is very important for a banyan tree. Okay, it cannot produce seeds without fig insects. सेकेंड जो है आई थिंक ये थोड़ा सा आइडिया लगा के एलिमिनेट कर सकते हो कैन यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट डज स्टार्ट इट्स लाइफ एज एन एपीफाइट ओके एपीफाइट वुड ओनली नीड सपोर्ट राइट ये हमें पता है एंड इट सेंग इट लेटर डेवलप्स पैरासिटिक प्रॉपर्टीज इट डज नॉट अपना इट इज एबल टू सर्वाइव और इट इज एबल टू नरिश इट ओन सेल्फ तो इट इज नॉट एज एफ कि वो लेट से जिसका भी सपोर्ट लेगा एज एन एपीफाइट इनिशियली इट विल नॉट बिकम अ पैरासाइट लेटर ऑन okay and the third question the banyan timber has high durability that is not true it is not durable banyan timber nahi hota hai okay so this also becomes wrong so statement 2 and 3 here is wrong which is correct for 39 only one is correct for banyan tree fig aapne dekha hai anjir jaise to basically fig insects are also uh, helping in the pollination फिग इंसेक्ट का एग्जाम्पल इज ऑल्सो द सेम एग्जाम्पल ऑफ म्यूचुअलिज्म बेसिक इंसेक्ट ही हैं अगर आई थिंक एनसीआर टी में तो इमेज भी है आई डो नॉट हैव इट राइट नाउ अदरवाइज आई वुड हैव शोन इट टू यू बेसिक फिग के ऊपर इंसेक्ट्स लगे होंगे एंड दिस इज हाउ द सीड्स एक्सेक्ट आर मूविंग बेसिक पॉलिनेशन वाला ही एग्जाम्पल है ये ओके ओके ह्योर यू हैव अ हर्बेशियस प्लांट थ्राइव बेस्ट इन वॉर्म मॉइस्ट रीजन्स ओके अब इसमें जो मेन पार्ट डिफरेंशिएटिंग है प्लांट्स डू नॉट स्प्रिंग फ्रॉम सीड बाकी केसेस में इट कैन बी फ्रॉम सीड ओके जनरली इफ इट इज फ्रॉम सीड इज इट सेक्सुअल प्रोपोगेशन या ए सेक्सुअल एंड इफ इट इज डन थ्रू बडिंग 
वो क्या होगा बर्डिंग इज ए सेक्शुअल ठीक है तो यहां पे क्या है इन दिस केस प्रोपगेटेड बाय यंग प्लांट्स बर्ड्स फ्रॉम द ओल्ड बल्ब एनीबडी हैज एन एग्जांपल किसी ने देखा बनाना इज आंसर मेन पॉइंट ये है स्टिल इन केस यू गॉट इट रॉन्ग बेबी यू डू नॉट नो इट्स अ हर्बेसियस प्लांट आई कैन अग्री हो सकता है और ये तो थोड़ा सा मुश्किल है टू बी एबल टू नो एग्जैक्टली राइट बट वन ऑफ द मेन डिफाइनिंग पार्ट इज दैट इन अदर केसेस मे बी आई थिंक इन पीपल ऑफ सनफ्लावर यू वुड नोट प्रॉपर सीड्स बट स्पेशली इन दिस केस यंग प्लांट्स आर देयर फ्रॉम द बर्ड ऑफ द ओल्ड बल्ब विल टेल हाँ हाँ शुगर केन भी वो हमने देखा ना उसमें शुगर में तो बर्ड चिप टेक्नोलॉजी यूज होती है ना यस हर्बेशियस प्लांट इज दैट जिसमें भी प्लांट में ओवरऑल यू नो वॉट इज अर्ब हर्ब श्रब एंड ओवरऑल ट्री so herbaceous is having more of the green part or the color exact ab exact definition almost aise hi rehti hai is less less or close to 1 meter ha to isme it is slightly bigger but of course having more green acha okay 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 acha tabhi but it's a herbaceous plant but aapko ye ek bhi ek one of the i think take away tha theek hai question number 40 जीन पूल इन अरेबियन लेपर्ड्स वी रीड अबाउट स्नो लेपर्ड अब आपसे पूछ रहे हैं हम अरेबियन लेपर्ड्स ओके एंड वी आल्सो मेंशन इज़राइल पैलेस्तीन वेस्ट बैंक बैरियर जीन पूल इन द अरेबियन लेपर्ड इज बिकमिंग शैलो नंबर वन देन प्रोलॉन्ग डिक्लाइन इन अरेबियन लेपर्ड्स पॉपुलेशन एंड दिस हैज बिन डिसरप्टेड ड्यू टू इसराइल वेस्ट बैंक बैरियर बोथ दी स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट ओके सो दिस इज समथिंग विच हैज हैपन दैट जीन पूल इज बिकमिंग वेरी शैलो okay for this and why because migration etc and all these things have been disrupted because of this west bank and israel barrier they have not been able to move to usse bhi gene flow gene pool is getting damaged so for 41 the answer is a ye statement one assertion dekho ek bar dhyan se assertion only few species of birds are found in arctic great number of amphibians live and breed there पहली बात तो एम्फीबियंस आर मोस्ट थ्रेटेंड थ्रेटेंड सेकेंड कल हमने देखा मैमल्स एंड बर्ड्स आर वॉम ब्लडेड एम्फीबियंस रेप्टाइल्स एंड फिशेस आर कोल्ड ब्लडेड इज इन दिस वो फैक्ट इसको कॉन्ट्रीडिक्ट कर रहा है सो बेस्ड ऑन दैट असर्शन ही गलत हो गया असर्शन इज रॉन्ग सो यू हैव मोर ऑफ द बर्ड स्पीशीज बट रेयरली एम्फीबियंस एम्फीबियंस आर वेरी मच लेट सेंसिटिव टू चेंजेस इन टेम्परेचर एम्फीबियन क्या होते हैं नहीं नहीं एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एम्फीबियंस फ्रॉग्स टोड सैलामेंडर एक्सेट्रा ठीक है सो द मोमेंट एसर्शन बिकम्स रॉन्ग सो आंसर इज एसर्शन इज रॉन्ग एंड रीजनिंग हेयर इज करेक्ट द सेम थिंग अबाउट वॉम ब्लडेड एक्सेट्रा यूल रीड यूल हैव मोर क्वेश्चन हेयर ऑल्सो दिस ऑलरेडी आई टोल्ड यू ये आई गेस सिटेशियंस सिटेशियंस आर क्या चीज अच्छा अच्छा आप आप व्हाट इज अ डाउट हाँ हाँ ठीक 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 है दैट्स अ वेरी डिसेंट डाउट जनरली वी से व्हेन वी से मैमल्स वी ओनली थिंक अबाउट टेरेस्ट्रियल मरीन एरियाज में मैमल्स के नाम बताओ मुझे कोई वेल्स ओके okay? अब सिटेशियंस में सबसे बड़ा कंपोनेंट है वेल्स देन यू हैव सिटेशियन सिटेशियन येस डॉल्फिन्स थर्ड सील्स ये है आपका पिनीपेड्स पिनीपेड्स आर सील्स सिरेनियंस मैंने बताया है बट ऑफकोर्स अभी किसी को पता नहीं होगा वॉट आर सिरेनियंस अभी मैं बताऊंगा आपको बट द मोमेंट आई सी सिरेनियंस आपको क्या यार ये तो मुझे पता है सिटेशियंस आर पहले सिटेशियंस लिखेंगे वॉट आर दीज वेल्स देन पॉर पॉइज नॉट टॉट ऑइज and just to give you one line differences between the two whales are the biggest in size less acrobatic dolphins most acrobatic you have seen people taking images usko khilana pilana sab kuch okay very good to see of course smaller than whales but very much intelligent and very social okay where as porpoise smallest of these not that acrobatic not that social okay porpoise kyu hum baat kar rahe hain because a recent Vakita porpoise se related the international whaling commission had issued an alert because only 10 vakita porpoise are present in the world only 
सिर्फ दस बच्चे हैं विच ऑफकोर्स मीन दिस इज क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड वकीता पर अच्छा स्टूडेंट्स आस्किंग फॉर क्वेश्चन लाइक फोर्टी इन केस यूर नॉट बीन एबल टू एलिमिनेट इफ यूर नॉट एबल टू फाइंड क्लूज इन सच क्वेश्चन इफ यूर नॉट एबल टू पिन पॉइंट यू कैन स्किप सच क्वेश्चन बट लेट से इफ यू आर हैविंग अ सर्टन आइडिया लेट से आस्किंग अबाउट क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी ओके दैट इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग दैट देर कैन बी टू क्लोज ऑप्शन मे बी यू कैन प्रोसीड बट माई पॉइंट इज वेन यू आर एक्सपोज टू थ्री हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन एटलीस्ट इन द पी आर पी यू विल हैव अ वेरी गुड बेस ओके जिसमें आपको काफी आइडिया रहेगा दैट हाउ टू मूव फॉरवर्ड विद द क्वेश्चन एंड यू हैव अ गुड अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्रोवाइडेड यू रिवाइज ओके हाँ बात करते हैं सिटेशन की सिटेशन देख लिया हमने देन यू हैव पिनी पेड्स द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पिनी पेड्स इज सील सील्स ओके सीरेनियंस का एग्जाम्पल इज ड्यूगोंग एंड मैनाटीज मैंने कल बोला था शायद बाय द वे बोथ ऑफ देम आर अंडर सीरेनियंस बट उनकी फैमिलीज अलग अलग है and of course there is visual and small small differences between both so yes both are marine both are herbivore manatee is also herbivore dugong is also herbivore and they are under serenians but there are certain differences between them as well for those who cannot follow yesterday we had seen manatees right manatees and dugong are following under serenian पिनी पेट्स आर सील्स ठीक है सो हियर एक्चुअली सिटेशियन वाला तो सही है सम ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट मरीन मैमल्स आर फाउंड इन दिस ओके बट ये सीरेनियन बिकम्स रॉन्ग द मोमेंट यू सी कार्नी वोर्स दीज आर हर्बी वोर्स तो दिस ऑफकोर्स इज रॉन्ग एंड वेन आई से सील्स एक्सेट्रा पिनी पीड्स एंटायरली हर्बी वोरस तो दीज टू डेफिनेशन हैव बीन स्वैप्ड ओके सो फॉर फोर्टी थ्री ओनली टू आर करेक्ट वन इज करेक्टली मैच सिटेशन एंड फिसी पेड्स आर ऑल्सो करेक्टली मैच ओके फिसी पेड्स जैसे कि ओनली पार्ट ऑफ द टाइम इन द वॉटर देखो ये क्या होंगे दे आर जस्ट लाइक रॉडेंट्स ओके so i think one of the examples of this is bears and rodents for fifisipeds most of the time on land and only a small point of time in water bears sorry snakes uh, i will have to see hey bachcha karna if it is there sorry ha 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 wo hai na only a part this is true one and four is true two or three mein differentiation has been swapped okay so this is your serenians you have dugong you have manatees amazon mein africa mein etc both are herbivore but again i am telling you very similar looking but still there are certain differences between manatees and dugong okay maybe you don't need to go into such of such detail but these are overall serenians theek hai next imas are formulated important marine mammal areas are formulated to account for shortcomings of marine protected areas question number 44 so this is actually true they are formulated naam se lag raha hai by the way just to give you a context marine protected areas do they have a legal backing or actually this is true they are declared under they are also declared under wildlife protection act of 1972 ये भी मरीन प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज भी कैन यू टेल मी इंडिया फर्स्ट मरीन प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया याद आ रहा है बहुत आंसर चलो लिखो कहीं पर प्लीज हैव अ लुक एट इट सेकेंड इज गल्फ ऑफ कच एम पी ए इज फर्दर रिकॉग्नाइज एज अ क्रिटिकल ड्यूगोंग हैबिटेट दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू वाइल वेन एवर यू थिंक ऑफ ड्यूगोंग यू माइट ओनली थिंक ऑफ गल्फ ऑफ मन्नार ओके बट ये भी सही है दैट दिस इज ऑल्सो रिकग्नाइज एज अ क्रिटिकल ड्यूगोंग हैबिटेट फॉर इन गुजरात बिकॉज ड्यूगोंग इज नॉट एक्सक्लूसिवली ओनली फाउंड इट इज फाउंड इन पार्ट ऑफ अवर कोस्ट इन सर्टन पार्ट सो इट इज फाउंड हियर एज वेल तो यहां पर आंसर क्या हो जाएगा सी बोथ वन एंड टू आर करेक्ट 
ओके ठीक है गुड पर ये भी जो जो भी ट्रिविया फैक्ट्स है ना जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल आई आस्ट यू अबाउट द फर्स्ट बी एच एस टूडे द फर्स्ट एम पी ए ये जो चीजें हैं जस्ट कीप ऑन नोटिंग एम एंड जस्ट सींग दम आफ्टर द क्लास ऑल्सो ओके नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द फ्लाईवेज और लेट्स से आई बी एज इंपॉर्टेंट बर्ड एंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी एरियाज अब देखो जब भी आप वेन एवर यू रीड अबाउट वेटलैंड वेटलैंड आर इकोटोन्स दे आर अ विंटरिंग ग्राउंड फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स सो मोस्ट ऑफ द वेटलैंड विच यू रीड विल ऑल्सो बी आई बी ए वेन एवर यू रीड दैट डिस्क्रिप्शन यूल फाइंड अ लॉट ऑफ वेटलैंड बींग रिकोगनाइज एज आई बी एज ठीक है अब कमिंग टू दिस क्वेश्चन पहले मैं फैक्ट आउट राइटली बता देता हूं इंडिया में देर इज नो आई बी ए विच इज इन डेंजर देर इज नो आई बी ए इन इंडिया विच इज इन डेंजर चिलका लेक इज इन विच पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया चिलका लेक इज ओडिशा सेकेंड कैन यू टेल मी चिलका लेक इज इट अ पार्ट ऑफ मॉन्ट्रियो रिकॉर्ड सो आंसर इज येस इट वॉज बट नॉट नाउ इट वॉज द फर्स्ट साइड टू बी एडेड इन द मॉन्ट्रियो रिकॉर्ड बट इट इज नॉट एनी मो ओके चिलका लेक इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ सर्टन डॉल्फिन कैन यू टेल मी येस very important for irawadi the moment i say dolphins in india think of northwest part wahan pe kaun si milengi indus dolphins the state animal of punjab then you have the gangetic dolphins the national aquatic animal of india and then you have the irawadi dolphin irawadi river india mein kahan se rise hoti hai ha huh? kab se since when aaj <laughs> नहीं मैं पूछ रहा हूं हो सकता आ, हो सकता आज से राइज होने लगी हो वी नेवर नो अरे ठीक ठीक ओके नहीं मुझे लगा शायद पता नहीं आज शायद मैंने आज के पेपर पढ़ा नहीं हो सकता हो ठीक है इरा वडी देखो वो पॉइंट <laughs> कोई बात नहीं दिस हैपेंस दिस हैपेंस नो इश्यूज हाँ चिचिरिका इज रॉन्ग ठीक है इरावडी के लिए इसलिए चिलका लेक इज वेरी फेमस फॉर साइटिंग इरावडी डॉल्फिन ऑफकोर्स इरावडी इज अ रिवर ऑफ साउथ ईस्ट एशिया मेकोंग का आप डेल्टा पूरा पढ़ते हो वहां से राइज होना तो ठीक है दैट्स फाइन सो देर इज नन बट यू शुड डेफिनेटली रीड मोर अबाउट चिलका लेक ओके वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नॉट जस्ट चिलका यू शुड ऑल्सो रीड अबाउट पुलिकट लेक ठीक है अब जो और पॉइंट uh, है रुक जाओ आई बी ए इज आइडेंटिफाइड बाई आई यू सी एन एब्सोल्युटली नॉट इट इज बाय Bird Life International, IBA is by Bird Life International, and third point is correct. The three major flyways pass through India. उसमें से भी सबसे important कौन सा है? CAF, Central Asian. Okay. Uh, Ashu, no, that is not correct. Kyola Dev is there, but also we have Loktak Lake as well. So you have two. It is not only uh, the Kyola Dev. So not just one. We have right now two. Okay. So I think this is clear. Only one is correct here. Now moving to the last five questions. Ye question, if you know that reptiles are cold-blooded, kya pehla hai? Even at room temperature, they can feel cold to human touch. How many of you have experienced it or want to experience it? Of course not. Kyu karenge, bhai? ठीक है. तो यहाँ पे they feel cold to the human touch simply because they are cold-blooded. ओके तो हमें बिकॉज वी आर आवर हैंड्स आर रिलेटिवली वार्मर दे डू नॉट हैव अ मैकेनिज्म टू जनरेट हीट इन देयर ओन बॉडी ओके तो दे रिलाय ऑन एक्सटर्नल हीट सोर्सेज फॉर थर्मो रेगुलेशन एब्सोल्युटली ट्रू बोथ स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट एंड इट इज आल्सो एक्सप्लेनिंग व्हाई दिस इज हैपनिंग द मेन रीजन इज रेप्टाइल्स आर कोल्ड ब्रेड दो वॉन्ट टू कॉन्टेस्ट दिस कैन ईजिली ट्राई दिस एट होम बट विद अज डिस्कलेमर ठीक है ओके नेक्स्ट Which organism is most likely to die? Up, padho isko. Amphibians, and we also know out of all the animal species, forty-one percent amphibians are threatened. वो भी हमें पता हो गया, ठीक है? So here amphibians, and why? Because of something you asked me. आप बताओ. You asked me that term, right? Right, correct. That is subcutaneous respiration. Okay. So, हाँ हाँ हाँ. आप आपने कुछ बोला? अच्छा ठीक है फिल्टर फीडर्स भी ऑलरेडी नो एनेलिड्स क्या होते हैं ठीक है और कोई एग्जांपल व्हाट आवर सेंटीपीड्स मिलीपीड्स वो क्या होते हैं सुना है ना देखा है 
ठीक है वो भी सही है सेंटीपीट मिस इट विल हंड्रेड लेग्स राइट ठीक है बट इट इज आई थिंक अंडर मारिया पोडा अंदर आर्थ्रोपोड्स सॉरी सोचना पड़ेगा अभी ऑन द स्पॉट इट आई कैन ऑल्सो नॉट रिकॉल दैट नाइडेरिया के एग्जाम्पल गुड चलो ये दिस इज अ डिसेंट क्वेश्चन इसमें देर इज वन थिंग विच यू मे नो सॉरी आप कुछ बोल रहे थे देखो ऑल स्पाइडर्स प्रोड्यूस सिल्क मैं पहले ये जानना चाहता हूं बताओ दिस इज एक्चुअली ट्रू ऑल प्राइड वो वेब बनाए ना बनाए कुछ नहीं फर्क पड़ रहा दे मे और मे नॉट बट दे विल प्रोड्यूस सिल्क दिस इज वन ऑफ द डिफाइनिंग फीचर्स ऑफ स्पाइडर दिस इज हाउ दे कम्युनिकेट इन जनरल सो एज अ फॉर्म ऑफ सोशल कम्युनिकेशन एक्सेट्रा दिस इज देयर दिस इज ट्रू एंड दिस इज एक्चुअली अ टफर पार्ट टू नो ओके तो नाउ यू नो ऑल स्पाइडर्स डू नॉट बिल्ड वेब दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू सम मे बिल्ड सम मे नॉट बट ऑल विल प्रोड्यूस सिल्क ठीक है देन यू हैव अदर स्टेटमेंट हियर विच ऑफ हां विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज सॉरी ये इनकरेक्ट है सम आर नॉट कार्निवोरस दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर कार्निवोरस बट अ कपल ऑफ सर्टन स्पीशीज आर नॉट सो दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू 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 ऑल स्पाइडर्स आर नॉट टेरिस्ट्रियल दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू ओके सो हियर विच इज इनकरेक्ट नान किसमें एक्सेप्शन है ना पर इस स्टेटमेंट अगर लिखा होता ऑल स्पाइडर्स आर कार्निवोरस तो एक्सेप्शन क्या होता हरबी वोरा भी उसी को ट्विस्ट कर दिया इसमें एक्सेप्शन तो इंक्लूड हो गया ना ऑल स्पाइडर्स आर नॉट कार्निवोरस वो समझ गया है पीछे अच्छे से ठीक है नो 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 बट देखो यहां पर वॉट यूर सेंग इज ट्रू बिकॉज ये सिंटैक्स सब में नहीं आया है यहां पर अगर सब में नॉट आता तो आई कुड अग्रीड ऑल्सो विद यू बट द पॉइंट इज फॉर स्पाइडर्स अब इसके बियॉन्ड कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन आपसे नहीं पूछ सकता इसके बियॉन्ड ठीक है सो दीज आर ऑल द बॉक्सेस वी आर चेकिंग फॉर आवर सेल्स हाँ चलो ठीक है ठीक है ओके आगे देखते हैं विच आर द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ बर्ड इसमें आई थिंक शायद आपको इसका आइडिया होगा कैसे रे हिंद क्या है यस कैसे रे हिंद इज अ बटरफ्लाई इट वॉज ऑल्सो इन द न्यूज बिकॉज आई थिंक सम ऑफ द स्टेट वॉन्टेड टू मेक इट्स येस अरुणाचल मे इट वॉज बिकमिंग इट्स स्टेट बटरफ्लाई राइट गुड ग्रीन मुनिया इट इज अ बर्ड ठीक रेड लाइन टॉर्पीटो बार्ब वॉट इज दैट राइट तो इसको ये गलत है ये गलत है वॉट इज नॉट अ बर्ड ठीक बिकॉज ओनली वन इज अ बर्ड एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन टूडे चलो आपने आंसर दे दिया विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज दिस लार्जेस्ट या सॉरी द टॉलेस्ट फ्लाइंग बर्ड सारस क्रेन बिलीव टू मेड फॉर लाइफ मोन द लॉस एक्सेट्रा एंड दे केन इवन स्टार्व टू डेथ ओके एंड लार्जली इट इज नॉन माइग्रेटरी ओके बट इवन इफ इट माइग्रेट इट इज गोइंग टू डू फॉर अ वेरी शॉर्ट डिस्टेंस so here for sarah screen here the answer ultimately becomes sorry this the answer here becomes sarah screen theek hai wo cyberin screen alag hai na sarah screen alag hai jo ab cyberin screen keh rahi usme i'll tell you something interesting it used to come to kela dev but since many years it is not being cited ab nahi dikh raha to wo dikh raha hai tabhi to wo dekh lekin star bhai इसलिए याद है क्या बात है दिस इज अ टेक अवे अब पूरी क्लास को याद रहेगा ठीक है एंड देन लिखा था ना दे कैन मोर द लॉस ऑफ द मेट्स एंड दे कैन इवन स्टार्व टू डेथ वी कैन इवन मेक मूवीज ऑन दिस राइट तो दिस इज समथिंग टू एम्बॉडी एंड लर्न राइट ठीक है सो विदैट वी विल एंड दिस सेशन जस्ट वन मिनट एक चीज बस बोलूंगा स्पेशली टू द ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स many of you would have found both test number 1 and 2 slightly difficult this even more difficult because this is usually we do not read ye sari cheeze you had a lot of current affairs here so idea of the test is to educate you as well so in case you are getting a lot of questions wrong you are also getting it wrong because you did not know okay 
सो इफ यू डिड नॉट नो यू शुड ऑल्सो आस्क यू सेल्फ वेदर द क्वेश्चन वॉज टू बी अटेम्प्टेड और नॉट ये भी एक इंपॉर्टेंट टेक अवे होना चाहिए इफ यू डो नॉट नो अ क्वेश्चन यू शुड नो कि हाँ आई एम टेकिंग रिस्क ऑन इट दैट इज वाई एम अटेम्प्टिंग इफ यू टेक अ रिस्क ऑफ कोर्स आई दिल गेट इट राइट और रॉन्ग सो अगेन बेस्ड ऑन वॉट वी हैव लर्न बिकॉज द आइडिया इज आफ्टर दीज थ्री हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन ऑफ पी आर पी एंड ऑल्सो आफ्टर ऑल द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन ऑफ यू पी एस सी योर नॉलेज ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट विल बी एट अ वेरी हाई लेवल एज विद ऑल्सो विद अदर सब्जेक्ट इन पी आर पी इन जनरल ठीक है उसके बाद इफ यू अटेम्प्ट एनी अदर टेस्ट एक्सेट्रा वी वुड एक्सपेक्ट यू टू स्कोर वेरी हाई क्योंकि जितने नॉलेज के गैप्स होंगे क्योंकि दीज आर मल्टी स्टेटमेंट क्वेश्चन इट दीज आर नॉट वन लाइनर्स हो सकता है बहुत क्वेश्चन में आपके तीन स्टेटमेंट सही हो रहे हो एक स्टेटमेंट की वजह से आपका आंसर गलत हो गया हो ओके सो टेक दिस एज अ पॉइंट ऑफ लर्निंग ओके बिकॉज यू आर ओनली दिस इज वॉट आई थिंक टू टूडेज थर्टींथ टुमोरो वेन बी स्पीक द नोटिफिकेशन वुड बी आउट ओके सो टुमोरो विल बी स्लाइटली अ डिफरेंट डे द सेंटिमेंट वुड बी स्लाइटली डिफरेंट मे बी बहुत जोश होगा फॉर्म भरना है या फिर ये होगा कि अब तो क्लॉक टिक 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 द एग्जाम इज क्लोज राइट बट स्टिल आई थिंक बाय ट्यूजडे यू वुड बी डन विद मी एटलीस्ट विद द पार्ट्स ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट तो अभी जो भी चीजें हैं अगर गलत ज्यादा हो रही हैं बिकॉज आई थिंक सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आर मैंशनिंग दिस सो टेक दिस विद अ पीस ऑफ सॉल्ट and when i say salt think about saline conditions and coral reefs okay thank you bye bye yeah yeah